Good afternoon and welcome to John Charles Centre for Sport here in Leeds. You join us right at the beginning of this afternoon's first game between Sweden and Finland. And you can see that the Swedes are about to kick off. This is game three in the IFAF Women's European Championship of 2019. The Swedes, as you can see, are kicking from right to left. And Finland, who were big winners on day one back on Monday by 50 points to zero against the Austrians, will see whether or not they can top the also undefeated Swedes, who snuck past the Great Britain Lions by nine to six on Monday evening. I'm Matt Walker here with Onside Productions, joined in the commentary booth by Carl Walkinshaw. Afternoon, Carl. Afternoon, Matt. Uh, exciting game in prospect. Two undefeated teams seeing who will struggle it out for supremacy on day two of these European Championships. And that was number 11 for the Finns taking the opening kickoff. That was uh, Kirsty Nihamo. Um, I'll apologise in advance for any mispronunciations this afternoon, but we will do our very best. Uh, we'll let you know in a little while how you can get in touch with us here at Onside Productions to tell us where you're watching from, who you're supporting. be good to know how many people around the European continent are tuned in for this game this afternoon. So here we go then. First down. First down for the Finns. Powerful offence display on Monday. And this first off, it's a straight handoff right up the middle, testing that interior defensive line, Cole. Yeah, they're going to want a key on that number 34 running back for the uh, our Swe the Swedish defence. She had a fantastic game, uh, did uh, uh, Kusinen, and um, that's what the Swedes are going to have to stop today. They're going to have to stop that big running attack of this, uh, this Finnish attack. So starting quarterback this afternoon for Finland is Emilia Hartikainen. Uh, very effective through the air last time, completed uh, six passes for 46 yards in that first game against the Austrians but it was very much that ground attack that wore down the Austrian defence as it appears they're trying to do right at the beginning there's a big gap off the left tackle and she goes all the way down past the 30 into the 20 she could be gone on the second play from scrimmage touchdown Finland very very impressive from Kusin and Tariti she just she just basically left off where she beat the Austrians uh, and she's done exactly the same on the first play, the first touch, uh, well, second touch that she's had, and she's gone the whole distance for a touchdown. So she has been the most impressive uh, uh, runner that we've seen so far, other than Ruth Matty of our, our own GB line. And there she goes, just picking her way through, makes a small cut to the left, and then before you know it, it goes relatively untouched all the way. One last diving attempt at a tackle at the 20, but untouchable, and the extra point is up. And it is good, I believe. There's a signal from our officials. So, nice quick start to this one. Not great conditions here in Leeds this afternoon, as it is all over the UK. Pretty cold, a little bit dank, rain in the air. Um, that uh, The Finnish running back, Kusin, as you mentioned, uh, in that game against Austria the other day, 17 carries, 195 yards, four TDs to go along with one two-point conversion. And you saw what she's got. She's got that very rare mix of size and a tremendous amount of speed. Not only has she got good size, she can run over other players, but she can also belt it down the sideline, as you saw there. Very impressive start. Very much expect this to be a run-heavy game this afternoon due to weather conditions, but also from what we saw from the Austrians. Now, we do know the Swedes, on the other hand, with their quarterback, Johansson, who will be shortly taking the field. They do have a passing attack on. They can hit you um, in a number of different ways. They can, and we saw from uh, number 84, uh, who we got, uh, uh, Karen Olsen, we're gonna, Ullin, rather. We're going to see her coming out, and that'll be exciting to see what she can do against this Finnish defence. So, number 40 there, just dropping on the ball and securing possession there for the Swedes. And we will see Johansson in this Swedish offence in a hole early. They never really were behind at all against the Brits. It was a very tight affair. 6-0 at half-time. The Swedes led on a long Karen Ullen touchdown um, in the first quarter. Uh, Ruth Matter levelled things up just into the second half. And then another impressive drive by the Swedes saw Karen Ullen tag on the extra three points for the field goal, which managed to secure them their first win. So Ullen fakes the handoff and there is that Sorry, Johansson fakes the handoff and she hits their favourite receiver, Karen Ullin, on first down. Yeah, I mean, if the game plan for the Finns is give the number 34, then the game plan for Sweden is going to be get the ball to Karen Ullin in space. Uh, you can see that little short pass. Karen Ullin has a knack of being able to turn those into big gains. That's what we saw against GB. That's what these Swedes are going to try and do here. 
So, second down upcoming after that pickup of five. It's going to be second in actually a pickup of six on first down. So, that's good yardage to try and open up the offense for the Swedes. Two receivers either side. Just the back and trying to get there. That could be a free play. There's a flag come out on the top of your screen there. So, it goes up top looking for number 82 that time. And that's um, Amelia Sancio. I'm uh, sorry, Emma Sancio looking for, knowing she got a free play, we think. And that should be an automatic first down for the Swedes. Yeah, just couldn't get that one complete, but you can see the way that she uses her voice very, very well on the cadence to draw these defenders offside. She did it against GB, she's done it here. Defence number 97, five-yard penalty, first down. Our officiating crew this afternoon, that's Peter Parsons with the call, joined by Stuart Taberer, Liam Wooten, Alicia Darkins, Philip Hume, Jenny Holmberg, Daniel Soholm and Burke Karachik. So a full officiating crew as ever for this Women's European Championship. So first down Sweden after the penalty. In decent field position up close to halfway. The Finns threaten blitz and they do bring that blitz. And there's a pitch out from Johansson. Hits Hedstrom and Hedstrom has room around the right side. And she's going to get another first down for the Swedes. So even though they've been hit early by the Finns, they aren't laying down. They're coming out sticking to their game plan, Cole. Well, we didn't see that against GB, did we? The pitch out. We've not seen it. There is a flag down on the field. Now, that looks like it might be a hold on the edge with Anna, Anna Hedstrom. They're just trying to get her extra yards and those receivers maybe got caught downfield. Here's the call. Holding. Offense number 80. 10-yard penalty. First down. So it is. It's a hold against the Swedes, which very much like the Brits the other day. It's almost uh, some positive yardage, but then held back. By a little bit of ill-discipline, but as you mentioned in commentary on Monday, Carl, it's very difficult. There's, there's holding almost on every play. There is. That was Mo Hansen that unfortunately got caught on that one. Nevertheless, a good run. Nice to see the run option as well. So that'll bring it back for first and 12. And again, fake play action goes across the middle, looking for number 82. And uh, that's uh, that number 82, as we mentioned, is Sanso. Yeah, it was nice defending actually by the Finn on that one, number 39. We'll just get a number for you. That was uh, Rantanen, uh, Hita Rantanen on the defence there. Done a nice job of staying with the receiver and uh, not drawing a flag either. Brings up a second and long for this Swedish team on their opening drive. So second and 12 it is. Second and 12 upcoming. Johansson now with trips down to her left-hand side, heads from alongside her to her left. Passing and she's putting that ball out on a receiver screen, which worked quite effectively for the last time against the Brits. But that's in and out of the hands of Hannah Carlson. Yeah, it's a wet ball, and Johansson just couldn't get it, couldn't get a clean release on that. So it bobbled as it hit the receiver's hands. You'll see it here, just side arms it out there. And uh, it would have been, I think, if that had had a nice spiral on it, 81 would have caught that and got for some yards. Johansson against the Brits was uh, seven completions for 142 yards with a TD, but she was intercepted twice against the Brits, but nevertheless came out winners. Uh, did Sweden on Monday, so third and long, third and 12 for Johansson. Again, she flings that ball out and she's got Ullen, and Ullen shakes off one tackler, shakes off another two, gets over halfway, but that will bring up fourth down for the Swedes. Yeah, Allen is a big, so not only is she quick, but Allen is a big receiver. So she's a nice target and she, she runs well with the ball, but also she's able to battle when she's got defenders around her. And you saw a little taste of that there. She really is uh, quite a threat, is Allen. So Johansson staying on the field, as in as is uh, Karen Ullen, and because Ullen is the special teamer as well. She's the kicker, the punter. She returns kicks as well. So she pretty much does it all for this Swedish women's outfit. Um... Johansson there is the up back. We did see a couple of fakes on Monday against the Brits, but I think this early on at midfield, this is going to come off a boot, and it's a high snap, which she manages the field. Line drive straight down the middle of the park, and the Finnish receiver thinks about picking it up after that bounce, but then thinks better of it, does number 88 there for the Finns. That's Anastasia Alavio. Yeah, I love you. I had a look at it, didn't she? And then thought, well, it's a wet day. I'm just going to take a sidestep and let that one come to, a, to an end. In the end, it was a pretty good punt for Mullen. Difficult conditions to handle the ball on these punt snaps and uh, special teams duties. So, Finland's second possession of the afternoon. We'll see Hartikainen and Kusinen particularly coming out once again. And the Swedes can expect to see a lot more of number 34 on this particular drive. Playing four down linemen are the Swedes. Threatening a little bit of blitz up the middle, who then backs off. So let's see, and here is 
Kusnin once again, and she bounces out to the same place, similar play that, that she scored that long touchdown on the first drive, and that's going to take her out close to first down yardage. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to find a way to get, you know, lots of defenders in the box to defend against this run. Otherwise, uh, 34 is just going to have a way with this team. Kusinen can just keep doing that all day long. She doesn't get tired and she's going to wear these defenders down. First down then, Finland. Second possession of the afternoon for the women all in blue. And they look a real dominating force as well as big... Kusnin running the ball, that offensive line looks dominant as well and so far is having its way with the Swedish defenders and there goes Hart, uh, sorry Kusnin up the middle again but as we mentioned on num on Monday, Johanna Aspenberg is a force to be reckoned with in the middle of that defensive line. Yeah, I wondered when she was going to make an entrance <laughs> and there she does, so that is a nice battle to watch, those two ladies will go at each other all day and uh, we sure what Aspenberg can do, she's good at getting round these offensive linemen and getting into the backfield and causing all sorts of problems. So we'll see how that plays out. Having said that, that's a pickup of three yards, even though Aspenberg seemed to uh, meet Kusinen relatively soon after she took the handoff, but it brings up second and six. And Finland will be pleased with the start they've made this afternoon. Got that kind of slot back on the right, haven't they? It just acts as that extra defender to seal the edge. You got, they are going that side. Oh, that's a great play this time from number 46. That's Tove Hedingren and manages to shoot the gap and this time does take down Kusinen in the backfield and maybe knock the wind out of herself making the play. Yeah, Kusinen's just dug, put her helmet straight into the chest of uh, Hedengren then and uh, that's, what the, uh, that's what the issue was on that one. But she looks to be all right. She's just a bit winded, I think. So here we go then, third and long, third and nine upcoming for Finland. See whether or not there's anything diff different to the formula for the Finns or whether it's going to be Kusinin once again to try and take that ball up. Let's have a look whether or not the ball will get through the air from Hartikainen. But no, it's Kusinin once again straight up the middle and she's got that power but number 30, Bronegard was the first to make the tackle and they are going to make the Finns come out and punt you would think on their own 30 yard line so a successful defensive stand on the second attempt by the Swedes. Yeah, Asland and Bronegard, the two defenders converging on uh, 34 there just to make sure that she doesn't gain any more yards and Kusinen denied the first down which is good signs for the Swedes, they can stop her if they get bodies onto her. Sunny Sapola is going to be fielding this high snap and she manages to get the ball away towards Asland and Rydberg but it's not going to reach them anywhere near, in fact it's not even going to reach midfield and obviously that is a live ball which is downed by number 28 for the Finns. So Sweden find themselves in very good field position and I suppose that punt there realistically by the Swedes after their first possession has paid dividends because the defence held strong and now they find themselves in finished territory to start their second possession. Yeah, good signs for the Swedes and they, str they struggled initially against that big offensive line, obviously on the second play they busted one down the sideline but since then the defence have consolidated, made some adjustments that they need to and they managed to stop uh, this runner Kusinen uh, from having a way on that drive so and now good field position so let's see what the Swedes can do with this spread offence they've actually got an extra running back in the backfield on this time Matt Finland scored 12 points in the first quarter against Austria so so far they've obviously just gone over half that way well, that's a good strong run by number 22 for Sweden that time on first down which will please the Swedish coaches no end the fact that She's able to pick up such good yardage uh, on first down there. Yeah, Min Min Zhao on the run there. We saw a little bit of her on uh, against G GB Lions as well. And she's a decent runner. You know, she, she'll she do the, the dog work, uh, the horse work rather if she needs to. So um, good run. And that brings up a nice short second down. So here we go. It was second and four last time. And Hedstrom broke a big long run on their second, possession, second down last time. But it was called back for that penalty. Same runner cuts inside and she's going to pick up positive yardage and then she gets met by the Finnish defender uh, Tina Murtinen was the first to meet her after a pickup of absolutely nothing so third down and four upcoming yeah number 31 Essie Sastamon and uh, she, she came around the edge there and nearly got the runner just uh, caught her in the backfield but number 22 Zhao had the had the wits about her to dance left and and then dance around it and get some additional yards nice running by Zhao 
So here we go, third and four for the Swedes. You you think for them to get a first first down of the afternoon, which obviously is going to give them a little bit of momentum back after Kusinin scored that long touchdown early on. And Johansson fakes, and this time she takes off herself, and she's got a bit of room, but she's dragged down after a pickup of two yards. Amanda Asland there, the tackler for Finland, and this is going to bring up fourth down. Now, we saw on Monday, call that uh, the Swedes weren't afraid to run some fakes on their punts. No, they won't. If they're put into a situation where they need to use fourth down, they will use it if they feel that. I don't think it's. Uh, I think it's too early to do that here. Um, well, actually not, because it's a very short. Yeah, you're right, Matt. The field position would suggest that they will go fourth down, and they're coming out to do exactly that. So Johansson lines up. Karen Ullin in the slot to the left, towards the bottom of your screen, looking to try and make that aggressive finish defense jump again. Now Johansson looks around after she reads the coverage, reads what defense she think might be coming. And she goes to the air, she side on, slings it, and it's in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, who is number 87 for Sweden. Just trying to get that number for you right there. I will get a name for that when I can. Yeah, Han Hatta um, Rantanen was on the was on the defence there and did a really nice job. Uh, no flags. There's been some close defending, and as the ball arrives, these Finnish defenders are timing it so far perfectly. But it could catch them out later uh, with a pass interference. We'll we'll see how that one goes. So. Fourth down attempt by the Swedes, this time comes up empty and Finland take over pretty much where they started last time. Well, actually just inside their own 30, 40 yard line. It goes up top and there's a receiver open and she's caught that ball over the top. A lovely pass, hits the receiver in stride and that's Kirsty Nerhamo picking up a big chunk of yardage on first down. Yeah, really nice throw as well. Nerhamo does enough to get, we'll watch the replay here, but you can see nice protection, no pressure from the Swedes, nice lofted ball, and Nerhamo just has beaten that defender. The defender does a good job of focusing on the basket and getting back to make that saving tackle, because that could have been another six. So they can do it on the ground, and they're showing they can do it in the air. Very impressive, these Finns. As you mentioned, that offensive line, a lot to do with why that pass was so accurate, giving uh, Hard Kane in the time that she needed to find that receiver open. This time it goes back to the usual formula of uh, Kusinen. And Kusinen breaks one tackle and is then brought down, but not, after, not until she falls for a gain of around six or maybe even seven. Brings up second and a long three, a short four, whichever way you want to look at it. And the Finns are in business again. Yeah, this is the way to keep a defence on its heels, isn't it? Go deep, and then they have to defend the pass deep, but you've got a great runner like Kusinen who can also bust it up the middle or bust it to the edge, and you've got a, a well-balanced offence. If they keep this up, it's going to be a long day for this Swedish defence. So this is the first of two games we're going to bring you today on day two of this Women's European Championships of 2019. Later on this, this evening at 7 o'clock, Great Britain will take on Austria as it's a low snap. And this time, the quarterback, who uh, got a change of quarterback there, obviously from a wildcat sort kind of standpoint there, number 25 in trying to take the snap. But that one she just has to eat, drop on, and brings up now third and long. Yeah, I don't know what the Finns would do. Why would you go to a wildcat there? You've got Vertinen coming in, and I'm sure she's a good player, and they want to they want to keep the variety going. But you had a great drive. Why change it? And now you've got a muff snap, and you've lost five yards. So, you know, stick to the formula that works. And so far, against Sweden and against Austria what you've been doing has worked. So Hartikainen comes back in to resume the normal service as it were. Still Kusin in back there looking to try and make the Swedes jump and they stay disciplined. She's looking to go to the air again. A little bit of pressure this time and she's taken back for a big sack but she can't be dragged down and it takes the official to blow the whistle before the play is dead but nevertheless a fantastic stand on third down. A loss of around about 15-20 yards. Yeah, Alma Gustafsson coming off the edge there from the Karlstadt Crusaders. And she does ever so well. She comes late and it's a delayed blitz. Quarterback has time to get rid of it, but then it's number nine on number nine. And there's only one way that's going to end, and that's a blown whistle. So I do think watching that replay where the official blew that dead may well have been a 20-yard loss. So from first down, inside the 30-yard line, they now face a big challenge on third down on fourth down rather um, hard to kind of go into the air again oh and it's in and out of the hands of her intended receiver uh, Sunny Sapala 
So yeah. that Sapala just took her eyes off the ball, I think, on that one and would have liked to have... I mean, those simple little passes, you know, Matt, playing receiver, you've got to focus on those just as much as you have a, a complex ball 40 yards downfield over your shoulder. You've got to, still got to catch it. You've got to catch it with your eyes first before you turn that head, Carl. So, but from that, that was a fourth down play. And it was a fourth and long play. And actually, rather than pinning the Swedes back, they've given them significant breathing room now. Sweden, on their next possession, will take over close to the 40-yard line. So an interesting decision there from the Finnish coaches, obviously putting a lot of faith in their defense. Yeah. So here we go. First down, Johansson hands this ball off this time. And once again, it is Zhao. And Zhao gets off the right side, picks up seven, maybe eight yards for a good positive run. Second and two upcoming for the Swedes. And they need to get something going here. But they will be buoyed by the fact that their defense has been able to hold this high-powered finish offense. Yeah, still just a one-score game, despite the running of uh, 34, despite the, bit, the nice catch of the Finns down the sideline. They managed that. They had that, that saving tackle that saved the touchdown and now it's still a one score game so they can calm down stick to the game plan and move move it forward and there we go that is the end of the first quarter and as we found on monday these games fly by 20 past three from a three o'clock kickoff and you know that's end of quarter one with the score of finland seven and sweden zero um if you'd like to get in touch with us here at the show, then it will be wonderful to hear from you. There is the link that you can do so on Twitter, hashtag WECLeads2019. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're supporting, whether or not you're enjoying not only the game, but also our broadcast. So as we begin the second quarter, the Swedes will pick up the ball second and two. I believe, just looking for where the chains are. At the moment, the chain, there we go, the chain crew are coming into the top of your screen there. Pretty sure it's going to be around about second and two after that pickup. But let's see how we go. So, yeah, just waiting for the chains to reset. It's second and three they're going to give it. Sweden just waiting for the officials to get things ready. As I say, this is game three out of six games in this Women's Euro European Championship of 2019. And we will bring you the standings at half-time as to how things are shaping up so far. Johansson hands the ball off once again to Zhao. Zhao tiptoes away up inside the middle. Then has to bounce off to the left and picks up a yard and a half. It'll bring up third and one. And we yeah. Sorry, Carl, go for it. No, nice defending there. I was just going to say by uh, Sastamon. We've called her name a couple of times. She's a good little defender. And um, she... Uh, the straight arm came in, but she didn't have any of it. If you watch here, here comes a straight arm. Zhao tries to give 31 a straight arm right in the chin. She says, no, no way, I'm having you. And uh, she brought it down to the ground. Nice tackle. Lovely to see we've got um, viewers in Paris watching from Paris, France. That's Nina Ristocelli. Let's go, Finland. Nice to have you on board, Nina. Hope you enjoy the rest of the stream. As I say, get in touch if you can. So third and one and a half as the Finns threaten blitz again. And up they come. And a great blitz pick up there by the back. And that is caught, and I can't see a number, but I'm betting that may well be Karen Ullen. Um, it's not, in fact. It's number five for the Swedes this time. It's Sarah Lidner. Called her name a few times on Monday, and that should be enough for a Sweden first down. Yeah, the blitz came in from Tina Motonen and uh, was picked up nicely by the running back in the backfield. I think Zao picking up the blitz there, and that just allowed, allowed Johansson to have the space you need to get that off. But, uh, you know, last second throws, good catch. These all all games of inches, as we said last time. When you get these high-quality teams, that's exactly how you've got to play it. We mentioned on Monday as well where the Brits struggled a little with the fact they were all based on Ruth Matter and a little bit of Phoebe Schechter. The Swedes do seem to have confidence in a number of players. OK, and this time it's given... Whoa, and it's... Karen Ullen again, who gets tripped by her own player, unfortunately, in the backfield for the Swedes. But as I was mentioning, they've got Johansson, they've got Ullen, they've got Zhao. We've already mentioned Lidner. They've got Hedstrom as well. They've got a, a, a number of receivers and running backs who they're quite happy to get the ball with and keep the uh, opposition off balance. Yeah, you're right, Matt. I mean, on that play, it was interesting because although Ullen tripped over her own player, that is pressure from that defensive line that causes that, which closes down that space, and Ullen ends up on the ground. Um, so that offensive line is going to have to drive these big Finnish defenders back. Second and 14, then, for the Swedes, and maybe in response to that pressure, they keep those two players in the backfield, and it's Zhao who sweeps off to the left-hand side, and she's met just past the line of scrimmage with a great tackle by number 11 for Finland. And that is Kirsty Nohamo playing both ways. Kirsty with that big reception on the previous offensive series for the Finns. 
Yeah, and you saw then the push. If you watch the push of this Finnish defensive line, they've actually ran a slant to the strong side that time, and they get that push, and they string it all the way out to the edge, and there's nowhere for the runner to go, which now brings up that long third down situation. So here we have third down once again for the Swedes, and it's not third and manageable, it's a third and 12. And just close to midfield, you can see the 50-yard stripe there, three yards away. But this is a really important play, even if nothing else, as Johansson rolls to her right, goes back to her left, and those slippy conditions may have had an impact then on Anna Hedstrom and her ability to reel that ball in. Fourth down upcoming. Great defence. Well, again, I mean, I'm loving the defence of these Finns. If you watch the way they cover this, um, it's uh, Ullin that goes out to the right-hand side into the flat to try and pick up a screen pass, and Sastamon goes right with a number 31, and there's no chance for her to have that screen. Really nice job by the Finnish defence. Almost looked a little bit like as well that the Swedes were trying to use a little bit of misdirection there with he with um, Johansson rolling to her right initially, looking for Karen and then coming back to her left with Hedstrom. But as you said, Finland covered it very, very nicely as this punt takes a roll in the Swedish direction down just inside the 30-yard line and it's Finland ball first down on their own 30 for the next possession. Yeah, good, really impressed by the Finnish defence on that series to drive them back to third and 12. Good run defence, good penetration. You know, Swedish players tripping up over each other. Swedish players not having an opportunity to make um, catches. Swedish players uh, being closed down. Really nice defensive scheme and good work by these Finns. Quick shout out to uh, Isabel Lindqvist. Um, go Sweden. Come on, guys, you can win this from Uppsala in Sweden. And we've also got somebody called Martin Cockrell watching from Devon, who apparently is supporting the Zebras. So neither Finland or Sweden. He's on the side of the officials, and so far they are doing a good job. Martin, and that's a big hit in the backfield initially by 55 for Sweden, but then followed up followed up by the next pursuing defensive player for the Swedes and I think that may well here it is it's that player again it's Asperg, Aspenberg who has finished things off yeah Thimfors and Aspenberg coming in to tackle um, Kusinen on that one you'll see here it's a blitz oh, it's not actually a blitz they've just mm. brought her in she beats her offensive lineman 71 um, and 71 Annie Alanka will want to do better next time they meet but that's what you've got to do you've got to stop uh, Kusinen in her tracks in the backfield before she gets any momentum indeed so second down and long after the initial loss and Kusinen gets the ball again manages to hold on to it as that handoff was a little bit low but she uses that power and some good blocking to pick up positive yardage and that should be what's well, going to be close to a first down I don't think from where that initial play was and no in fact the original line of scrimmage from first down was the 30. She hasn't managed to reach the 40, so it's going to be third and a yard. Yeah, it, and, and again, you know, you can defeat her once she comes back. And you, you get it for a two-yard loss. Next play, she comes back, runs for 10 yards, and now it's third and manageable. Big play here for the Swedes again. If they can stop this might, you would expect this ball to be handed off by Hartekainen and the Finns. We have seen all sorts this afternoon from them. There, that's a great, great work up front. And that's number seven for Finland, who is uh, number seven, takes the ball straight up the middle. That's uh, Jaskala, Mariel Jaskala, who picks up the first down yardage, and the Finns are now rolling once again. Yeah, good job by Jaskala. Only got to get the yard, but obviously everyone knows they're going to key on the running, and they're going to they're going to stack that line of scrimmage to the Swedes, and that's what they do. Um, but the Finns do enough, and it's all it's down to that push of that offensive line. So good battles going on. Good one-to-one -one battles here, Matt, between Absolutely. that D line and O line. Absolutely. So another set of downs now for the Finns, who look to extend their 7-0 advantage. But obviously much more competitive than their first out. And that's a great tackle again. Sheds a block. Does that number 55 we mentioned previously. That's Thin Force once again. But there is a flag on the play as well. And this may well be a hold against the Finns. And they're indeed marching themselves back. We'll wait and listen to our referee. Indeed a hold against... Finland and that helps the Swedish cause no end so from first and ten it will be now first and twenty they don't make a lot of mistakes the Finns they haven't seen a lot of holds from them we saw one I think out on the edge but certainly this offensive line very well drilled given the amount of runs they have they're the leading run team you don't see a lot of penalties so they'll be disappointed with that so here we go then first and a considerable distance 
for Hartekind and the sweet and the uh, famous roll. And she goes up top again, looking for that same receiver, looking for number 11, Nurhamo, once again. And she was behind her defender, but this time she just couldn't keep up with a little bit of an overthrown ball there from Hartekainen. Yeah, even if it doesn't work, the reminder is you can't just crowd the line of scrimmage and try and top Kutinen. You have to play the pass as well. And so the little reminder there from the Finns, we do have this deep threat in Nurhamo, so you better keep your eyes peeled. So first and 20 becomes second and 20. Trips down to the left this time for Finland. Sapala on her own at the top of the screen and here comes in motion and there is a jet sweep attempt but that one's blown dead before it has a chance to start and the signal from the official at the top of the screen, Alicia Darkins, seems to suggest that it is an illegal procedure false start penalty. False start, offence number 77, five yard penalty, second down. And that's called on Sarampair, number 77, Anna Kaiser Sarampair. We'll see whether or not they're giving themselves a lot to do now. It's now second and 25. Great. I don't know whether you can hear it, but there's great support from the Swedish fans. I mean, they just don't quit, do they? They're just banging the drums, and uh, hopefully you can hear that on the screen. So here we go then, second and long. And here comes that play again. That's going to be another false start. You saw at the top of the offensive line as you were looking, Venla Nikola who was guilty that time of going a little too early, and the Finns are now killing Offense themselves. Self-destructing, commentator's curse. What was I saying out. about the discipline of this <laughs> Finnish offensive line, and now they're just falling apart. So we've had a hold, we've had two false starts. That is 20 yards of penalties, folks. This series is uh, one they're just, gonna, they're just gonna wanna get rid of the ball on. So uh, there she goes, way early. Absolutely, top of the screen. We could see that all the way from up here in our commentary position and easily for easy for the officials to spot that one if if us here in the commentary booth can do the same. And that looked like a little bit of a jump again from that right-hand side of the finish line. They're going to attempt this same play, but this time they go the other way instead of the jet sweep. It's handed off to the other back, number six for the Finns. But again, that's very well read by that Swedish defence. That's Kempi for Finland, who doesn't see a lot of daylight there. And yeah. this disastrous series, Carl, goes from bad to worse. Kempi didn't have a chance on that one because 55, who we've said, Thimfers, who's come in. She's listed actually as an offensive lineman, is Ellen Thimfers. I don't know whether that's where she's playing, but she's playing great on the defensive line. She came in, disrupted that one, and then Sweden also rallied to the ball. But uh, no chance for the runner. So I always told you, you know, Martin Cockrell knew what he was talking about. He's beginning to touch again. Shout out to all the gang at Onside Productions for the great stream. Keep up the good work. work. Thanks, Martin. Hope Devon's not quite as wet as Leeds. Uh, it's hard to kind of... Look, oh, that's a designed QB draw there. She obviously takes that ball really high up, pretending she's going to throw that pass, and then pulls it down when she sees the DBs drop off. But again, very well covered by the Swedish uh, linebackers and linemen. Yeah, I mean, it's a smart play for the uh, for the Finns because uh, you're just going to keep it in your quarterback's hands, low risk, and just see what she can get to give them a little bit of extra space on this uh, on this uh, on this punt because uh, you don't want to put the ball at risk from third and 20 what what where it was third and 28 wasn't yeah it? fourth and 24 now so Sapala back to kick for Finland it's a nice high pick gives the return team chance to get down there and indeed they do it takes a finish bounce and it's fielded just outside the 35 yard line and Sweden are very much in this one Cole. Yeah poor poor series there for the Finns and they were defeating themselves on that one a couple of good plays by the Swedish defense but other than that it was that offensive line that just struggled with those penalties uh, and uh, the coach will no doubt be getting them on the sideline and say come on girls we really need to sort out our discipline uh, started off well but this second quarter so far has been a very tight battle between these two teams. All right, let's take a little bit of an uh, opportunity to catch up with what's going on on Twitter. Remember, hashtag WEC Leeds 2019 if you want to get in touch. Um, watching the Sweden-Finland game from Gothenburg. Go Sweden. That's uh, Natalie Haxel. Good to have you on board on first down as Hedstrom takes the carry off to her left-hand side. She's got a little bit of room, but she's been very tentative. Stiffs arms, one player gets past the 40 to the 42 before she brings up second down and around about five. Uh, where else have we got here? Uh, Joel Fagel watching the Lionesses from Norrköping in Sweden. Let's go Finland. Um, so we've got Lionesses, Sweden, let's go Finland. Okay, good to have you on board again, Joel. Well, they're close, these two countries, aren't they? Absolutely. No, you might be touring around Sweden, but actually supporting your home Finnish country. Absolutely. 
plenty more to bring you as the afternoon goes on. This is second down and five now for Sweden. And this time, Karen Ullen from the Wildcat. And Ullen streaks up the middle, a big hole past the 50-yard line into Finland territory, where it'll be Sweden first down. Yeah, the easiest way to make yards is north and south. And if, you, if, you, if the hole opens up like that off the, uh, off the uh, run option, then Ullen will punish you for it. She's big and strong as well as fast, and uh, that sort of running is more and more what the Swedes would like to see. Tom Parks. Englishman in Stockholm cheering for the Swedes today. Gutted with the GB Sweden results on Monday though, yeah. So obviously the, the Brits will be realistically wanting Sweden to win this one and hope the Brits can win later on so that Finland, Sweden and Great Britain are all tied on one win apiece going into the final day on Saturday as Karen Ullen keeps the ball once again. She rolls around the left end, picks up five, six yards, still going strong and then she's hustled out of bounds on that sideline by number 41, Eleanor Kiro, as well as her teammate, where are we, 31 was there as well, Sastamoinen. It's nice to see the depth of the playbooks that these teams are bringing, you know, these national teams. Finland also have their own version of the Wildcat that we've seen once today, but putting Ullen in at that Wildcat position, having her run the ball from there is just... Uh, just clever offense get the ball I mean every offensive coordinator knows the thing you want to do is get the ball to your best player so why not put a wildcat in with Karen Ullen back there absolutely this Ka time it's Johansson back under uh, back at the snap Karen Ullen picked up 98 yards through the air against Great Britain and this time that is very well sniffed out by that Finnish defensive line yeah did a nice job there and I think that they've gone to the well one too many times on that uh, on, on that quarterback keeper yeah and that was Johansson again making maybe not the quite the right read but maybe was the right read based on the fact that that initial option she had was probably very well covered by the finished defensive end so after the Karen Ullen first down it now brings up second and 14 after the loss from Johansson as I mentioned Karen Ullen was very much the playmaker against the Brits on Monday. 98 yards through the air. Many of those, 80-odd of them, coming on that one reception. Here is Ullen from the Wildcat again. And that's good penetration. She managed to get around the edge and picks up five, six yards before she bundles her own player out of bounds. That's Headstrom she runs into the back of. Yeah, this Tina Moten and number 30 didn't get there, but does enough to string. Karen Ullin has to go round her, even though it's a straight arm. That defender doing enough with that penetration to stop Karen Ullin. Uh, hitting that gap so it, it was effective and she doesn't pick up much there well it's first down yardage though enough I think last time out we called it wrong on second and 14 it was more like second and four but nevertheless first down once again first down once again for the Swedes and they are rolling as half time approaches and Ullen takes the ball once again this Wildcat offense proving effective she's taken down by the helmet and that is going to be an illegal tackle grabbed around the the back of the helmet by number 18 for Finland. And Nura Kopanin is going to be called on that one. Yeah, it wasn't intentional by Kopanin, but if you watch, great blocking by the Swedes initially. And then uh, here comes the, the play. Here's the call from the ref. Personal foul, face cage, 14 of the defence, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. So it was indeed that face mask penalty personal foul penalty which is not going to do the Finns any favours and just like on Monday the Swedes driving close to the end of a half Great Britain got down to the one yard line on Monday against Sweden right towards the end of the game and then Sydney Green was intercepted and Sweden held on for that first victory of this tournament there goes the motion player and oh in and out of the hands of number 80 that's Moa Hansen, who uh, Johansson was looking for on that play. Yeah, rolled right, receivers going right. Um, Johansson coming, coming across to her right, but Ullin was picked up by three defenders by the Fens, and they've also got a safety in motion that motions with Ullin if she does uh, show any motion pre-snap. So these Fens definitely keying Karen Ullin. But like you say, uh, Matt, the Swedes do have other options that they can go to. Let's see what they can do from in this tight space they've got to work in the red zone. Second and ten. Obviously, all you football fans out there 
as much as the Swedes are close to the end zone we mentioned the other day. And there's the option. And oh, it's pitched. And that's a live ball. That's gone backwards. For me, that's a live ball and a fumble. And Hedstrom seemed to be very lackadaisical dropping on that one. Does manage to in the end. But everybody else seemed to stop as if that was a forward incomplete pass. No, you're right, Matt. It's a live ball. Hedstrom just couldn't kind of locate it. I think it was bouncing around. So she actually did well just to keep her feet and uh, get on the ball in the end under pressure from those fins. That was... Uh, close to a turnover by these Swedes. Now it could well be the conditions but equally we have seen some very good offensive plays but defences are very much coming to the fore in this one with two minutes left in the first half. Can Sweden find those 21 yards they need to level things up and who's at the quarterback again? It's Karen Ullen from the Wildcat and she fakes the handoff to the left, decides to keep it and then is met by Heike Rockenen and um, reads that play very well. Isn't fooled by Karen Ullen in the backfield. Now Riken then uh, did nice there because Ullen had no, nowhere to go on that one. He eventually just had to eat the ball. Not been a great series from that 15-yard line. They've been pushed back now to the 22. I believe that may well be... Let's have a look what's going on here. I think it's a two-minute warning. Although the Swedes almost thought they had a little more time than they apparently do have and the referee has blown time in although let's have a, just have a now it's time out called by Sweden so a little bit of confusion there listen to referee Parker time out called by Sweden at two minutes exactly first time out of the half so Sweden use their first time out of the half at the two minute warning fourth down and 18 maybe even yeah fourth and 18 now and decision time for the Swedes. We know they can pick up big chunks quickly. And this would be the time for them to do it. We also know they can kick. You remember Karen Allen with the uh, two field goal attempts. But she does have a, a decent leg. And they trusted her to make a kick of around 40 yards against the GB Lions. Now, it wasn't successful. But there's a similar sort of distance here. You just think the weather conditions and the wet and... Uh, there is a bit of, of wind as well. You're not sure whether they would bring her out to do that. But uh, if need be, Ullin, if they don't want to take a risk with two minutes left, uh, they can certainly have a try and field goal. So the story of the half so far has very much been similar for both sides, managing to find a little bit of success with their offence, but then stalling and penalties, good defensive series from the opposition, stifling drives, which gives us this 7-0 scoreline with two minutes left in the first half. Um, on Monday, Finland managed to amass 444 yards. Let's have a look at what Johansson manages on fourth down. She's going to the air. She's got a bit of time. Pops the ball up, and that is incomplete. A little bit underthrown as the pressure came. Her intended receiver was... Where are we? Apologies. Um, was Hansen. Moa Hansen once again. But number 88 for Finland. Comes up with a good play to, to uh, break that one up. That's Olavuo once again. Yeah, Olavu did a good job there on that one. And, and the, again, the pressure from the from the defensive line of these Finns threw Johansson off, threw her timing off, and she just didn't have enough. You felt, I felt like if they'd had a little bit more time there, Johansson could have got that one complete. We didn't really know on Monday when we were watching, Carl, the, the sort of which which team out of the four were the, the stronger, and we wondered whether or not the score against Austria flattered the Finns somewhat, and whether Sweden, Great Britain, you know, who were sort of comparable, and it appears from this stage of proceedings, as Kusinen takes the ball on first down up for a pickup of seven, it appears that maybe Finland, Sweden, and Great Britain are very much well matched. We will see whether or not that comes to fruition with the GB Austria performance. Don't want to take anything away from Austria whatsoever. I think by the end of today, we'll get a better picture about who the contenders are in this one. Sometimes a team can just have your number. You know, you d the Austrians can come out and could play great against the, uh, against GB. We'll just have to see how that pans out. But if you're a, if you're a GB fan, you'll be rooting for Sweden in this one. So here we go. Oh, it's a snap, not intentionally direct to the running back, but it does find its way into the hands of Amelia Kempi. She manages to make the most of it and uh, pick up good yardage. Yeah, and that's just smart thinking by Kempi. You know, you make the best of the situation that you've got. All right, so you know the play call. The ball comes in your hands. We just try and find the hole that was originally there for the original one runner. 12, first time out of the half. So Finland take their first time out of the half with under two minutes remaining. They're obviously just 
it outside their own 35-yard line currently. Still do have aspirations of scoring, otherwise they wouldn't be taking timeouts at this stage. We already saw that Kusinin has the ability to break things open at the, at the drop of a hat. So let's see. Now another stoppage from referee Parker. Timeout called by Sweden at 1 minute 12. Second time out of the half. So there we go. One minute 12 remaining in the half. And Finland take their first time out. And then Sweden take their second. As I mentioned earlier on, this is day two of the Swedish Championship. Sorry, the Swedish Championship. Looking at something else while I'm thinking. Day two of the IFAF Women's European Championship of 2019. We conclude this competition on Saturday when at 3 o'clock Sweden will take on Austria and the 7 o'clock outing will be between Great Britain and Finland. I mentioned earlier on, Carl, yep. that uh, Great Britain may well be wanting um, uh, Finland to win this one. But in, in your perspective, from a Brit's point of view, obviously they can only now amass two games. They probably won't be wanting Sweden to win this one because if Sweden win this, you you could argue that Sweden are favourites against Austria. That would give them the three wins they need to take the championship. So, realistically, Great Britain will probably be wanting Finland to win this and then give themselves a chance. It's all very complicated when you've got just a four-team series. Yeah, you've got to make the assumptions about what games are going to win because you could call it either way. But I think you're probably right, Matt, in terms of your assessment that, we, you know, I think you don't want either of these teams running away with three wins. Timeout called by Finland at 1.05, second timeout of the half. So 1.05 remaining, both teams with one timeout left each. It is difficult because, like you say, you, you mentioned about a team can just have your number on any one day. So maybe we're doing the Austrians a bit of a disservice and they will come out this evening, all guns firing and uh, put the Brits away. And you often learn from a loss as well, more than you do from a win. So we'll see how, and GB, you know, will have learned a lot from that loss as well. So we'll see how that one plays out. I wonder if the Finns are looking for Nurhamo's bottom of your screen, mm. number 11, that deep threat again. Let's see if they try and get to her. So second and short, just need a yard for another first down. But realistically, uh, the yardage isn't massively important at this stage because they're battling against the clock. They've got to try and get big chunks quite quickly. Two receivers at the top, as you mentioned, Nurhamo at the bottom, who has been effective. And she does look that way. Great call, Carl. And there's a chance. And that, oh, that, that DB, there's, I think there is a flag there because I think number 17 didn't have her eyes on the football whatsoever. Um, for Sweden, uh, we've got a not got a, a number there. Here we go. I think it's going to be pass interference called by uh, referee Parker. Pass interference, defense number 12, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, as much as I haven't got a 17, I haven't got a 12 either. On mine, there we go. So we think it's Pelochi who is called and guilty, and whoever it was from my view here. Uh, the DB didn't even look at the ball. She eyed the receiver all the way, never got her head around, and therefore played the receiver rather than the football. Yeah, they had the same thought I did, Dino Nurhamo, on that down. It just felt like the offence might be looking in that direction, which they did. She was double covered, so mm. um, I suppose a penalty is better than a touchdown. And if they thought that she was going to be free to run downfield, then uh, there you go. So it is first down <laughs> as our cameraman just catches up. Alex doing a fantastic job. He does do a fantastic job. We ribbed him a little bit on Monday about something that he missed. He was deceived by a little bit of misdirection, but he does do a fantastic job for us day in, day out. As Kusanin takes the football and uses that strength of hers, gets up to the 35-yard line of the Swedes after that pass interference penalty. And it's going to be second down and six, but it appears Finland will take their final timeout of the half. Timeout called by Finland at 56 seconds. That is their third and final timeout of the half. It's nice that you didn't mention Alex's mistake again it is. on this broadcast. I'm, it's kind of you. I, I, I am, I'm quite a compassionate man when it comes to uh, push comes to shove. Um, and and I, I always like to give credit where credit's due. Uh, but I'm sure Alex was busy doing something else very technical. Apologies for... Well, not, a, not apologies, because it's fantastic atmosphere-wise, but you might not have heard the official there over the noise of this uh, very enthusiastic drummer in the crowd. And it uh, all adds to the game day experience as Finland plot their next plan. 
Second, I mean, these Finns are driving though. This this half isn't over. We've got a minute, just under a minute left. There's no doubt they can get close to field goal opportunity here to, to uh, get the uh, get a lead extended as they go into the half. Absolutely. Second and six then. As we hear from the Women's Gridiron Foundation over in the United States, we'll bring you that message shortly on Twitter. Lovely to know that you guys are tuning in and enjoying this stream as Hartikainen then goes up top again and looking for looking for uh, number three that time, who is Sapala once again. Yep, yeah. and good coverage. The safety came across to help as well, so that one really wasn't ever going to be successful. So yeah, as I say, women, the Women's Gridiron Foundation. Uh, shout out from across the pond from the Women's Gridiron Foundation to both the Finnish and Swedish ladies. Great game and great broadcast. Thank you. It's fantastic to know that we're reaching all parts of the world, not just over on the continent in Europe. Great to know that at um, early in the morning it will be there over in the States, maybe 11 o'clock, depending on which side, which coast they're on. But lovely to know that we've got worldwide audience this afternoon, Cole. Well, nice to know that the uh, you know they're taking interest in European football. I think that will be time out by Sweden. Time out called by Sweden at 51 seconds. That is their third and final time out of the half. I must apologise. I've been calling referee Parker for the past 10 minutes. It's Peter Parsons. I didn't know his name was Peter, but I. For some reason, I had Spider-Man in my head and was going down the Peter Parker route. But You've obviously seen what he wears at the weekend. Well, I've, I've not long seen Far From Home. Fantastic uh, sequel to the Marvel Universe. The MCU going strength to strength. I digress. Let's get back to the football. But anyway, Peter Parsons making the calls for you here this afternoon from the John Charles Centre for Sport in Leeds, where we currently have Finland leading Sweden by a score of 7-0 to zero, with under a minute left in the first half of Game 3 of the IFAF Women's European Championship here in Leeds in the United Kingdom. So it's third down, a long five for Hartikainen and the Finnish ladies. So, oh, that's an awful snap, and she has to drop on it. Didn't intentionally take a knee, but when she realised the knee was on the ground, she obviously very quickly understood that that was that. Okay. And it will bring up fourth down. The clock continues to run. No timeouts left. We haven't heard from Kusinen in a while, have we? Fourth down. Kusinen is in the backfield. Looks like a run heavy to the right. Let's see what they dial up here. 27 seconds and counting, as you can see from our clock on screen. Hartikainen vies things up, and there is Kusinen. Carla, it almost appears you're in that finish huddle at the minute, and Kusinen doesn't get first down. The clock will stop for a changeover of possession which will give the Swedes an opportunity, but you would think with 15 ticks left on the clock, they will probably just bite the bullet, nail this one out, regroup and come back in the second half after the adjustments, whatever they will make. Yeah, that was a decision they made against GB Lions, wasn't it? But they did have the lead 6-0 at that point in the game. So interesting to see what they do here. But yeah, with only 15 seconds or there or thereabouts, uh, we will see. So apparently I've, I've now uh, given Peter Parsons a new nickname. He's now going to be known as Spider-Man, according to <laughs> at Baffer official Graham Smith. Uh, lovely. Thanks for getting in touch. And I'm, I'm proud to be able to nickname any zebra whenever I can and, and give them a little bit of uh, kudos there. So Peter Parsons now he will shortly raise this ball aloft for the end of the first period, although it looks like... We're just waiting for the last few ticks to run off before that ball is raised aloft. And indeed, there it is. And Spider-Man will raise the ball aloft for the end of the first half here in Leeds, where we have a scoreline of Finland 7 and Sweden 0. Very briefly before we go to a, a quick break, Carl, just... As we do, sum up that first half for us. Well, I thought after Kusinen scored on the long 60-yard run after the after early, very early on, first series of the Finns, I thought, oh, no, we're going to be looking at another beating here and the Finns are going to take the lead. But Sweden, to their credit, have come back astoundingly well and have made adjustments on defence and they managed to shut, shut it down. It's been fascinating so far to watch. Aspenberg on defence for the Swedes has been very influential, but like you mentioned, Kusinen is always going to be the go-to player for the Finns and we will see what adjustments are made at the half. Um, Sweden should be in receipt of the ball as they kicked off the beginning of this one. 
So we'll take a brief break. We'll come down back to you for a little bit of half-time analysis shortly. But at the half, we will leave you with the score of Finland 7 and Sweden 0. Don't go away. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to the John Charles Centre for Sport here in Leeds at halftime of Sweden against Finland, where Finland currently lead by a score of 7-0 to zero here on Game 3 of the IFAS Women's European Championships of 20. Quarter, and you mentioned how you thought of, or maybe feared that this may well go the same way as the Austrian game did for the Finns. Um, but no, Sweden managed to solidify the defence, made some adjustments, and although Kusinin has been effective, um, Sweden have managed to slow it down sufficiently enough. Yeah, I've been impressed by Ellen Thimfors, number 55, who's come in from... Uh, she's listed as an offensive line, plays for Karlstadt Crusaders. She's come in and she's played uh, well on that defensive line. She seems just to have bolstered it a little bit. And she's helping out uh, Johanna Aspenberg <coughs> on that tough right-hand side of, this, of the Swedish defence to uh, to step up and deal with the threat that uh, Kusinen gives the, uh, gives this Swedish defence. The linebackers have also stepped up on Sweden so both defences are playing well we've seen really good defence haven't we Have, apart from Austria obviously giving out 50 burger you couldn't say with any credibility that that's a good defence at that point in the game but we'll see how they progress through the tournament but generally GB defences look good Finnish defence Swedish defence it's a good defence so I'm enjoying it from that perspective and you always do enjoy the defence but having said that I, I like that chess battle even though I'm more offensive minded and like to see an explosion of points I, I, I generally would like to see a shootout I'd like to see defences get riddled with holes if I'm perfectly honest honest and offensive coaches have their way in big high scoring games on both sides not blow out particularly 50-0 affairs but but nevertheless um I was You're not telling me that, that, get, that the end of that drive, GB drive, the, oh. that game on Monday night, driving down with the That's score at 9-6. Absolutely. You're not telling me that wasn't tense. No, it was exciting. It was tense. It was, when the game's in the balance like that, no, absolutely. I'd much rather have a low-scoring game like that than a 50 nil. I would much rather have, because by the time, you know, by, by half-time, well, in fact, of that uh, first game, it was 12-0, I believe, at half-time of the Finland. Just trying to find my stats here in front of me. Um... It was yeah. It was it was only 12-0 at half time for Finland Australia uh, Australia suddenly made an appearance. So yeah, Finland Aus Austria was 12-0 at half time. And at that point, you know, the Austrians have got to be thinking, well, you know, two scores, not too bad. We've done well to hold Finland. But then that second half explosion by Kusinen in the Finnish offense, where they put 38 points on in the second half. That's no, nobody really wants to to, to be on the end of that. And, you just and to felt watch that. that, yeah, you're right, Matt. It's a good good stat actually to look at that. You're right. It was it was closer than it seemed with that game ending up. 50 points but them scoring 24 points in the third then an extra two touchdowns in Q4 even when they had the backups on they still looked good um, it was that Kusinen and it was the offensive line of Finland that wore down the Austrians in the end and Sweden hopefully will be aware of that and will have enough depth to stay fresh the weather conditions are slightly different as well defences tend to get 
tired in hotter weather but it's more difficult to run for offenses obviously when the weather's like this so we will see uh, whether Sweden can stay with this uh, big strong Finnish offensive line absolutely right so Finland have been out on the field for a significant amount of time warming up in the in the rain here in Leeds the Swedes have come out to much more recently you can see the the officials Peter Parsons and his crew are out ready to go as well so let's just check in on the Twitter sphere if we can remember hashtag WEC Leeds 2019 is how you get in touch with us here on the stream today um, what have we got here then um, Milica Milica watching from Vancouver British Columbia and Canada cheering on Sweden place. absolutely and my old Crusaders teammates great to have you on board Milica um, Laurie second half is about to begin um, giving us a little bit of a shout out of where to join in and watch. We've got Erica from Edmonton in Canada cheering for Finland and teammate Anna Rasilati. So wonderful to have people from north of the border across the pond watching. Uh, well, you're going to attempt this one in Swedish here what? from SAF. From SAF. SAF info. Go for uh, it, Cole. Even if I attempt it. Fix Samsa Tank Bara starter. No, there you go. Match no. on yeah, Sorry. Sorry to all the Swedish fans. It, out it there basically could. It basically says. Let's go Sweden, come on Sweden. And the reason I know that is because at the end of the tweet, there's a Swedish flag. So I've got a, b b a belief that Saf is roaring there's for Sweden. There's somebody in the stadium as well, Saf, because uh, there's a picture there on the, on the uh, old Twitter handle. So, uh, hi Saf, if you're there, or if that's an organisation, it might be an organisation. Is it Sweden American football? It may well be. It might be. We'll have a look. We'll, have, we'll look that up as the game goes it's on. Official. I like the way as well that we've got people from uh, Sweden trying to give a little bit of advice um, we've got Frederick Bengston uh, Sweden needs to be more consistent in the attack and take over the momentum in the game absolutely that momentum is a massive factor in any football game and then he continues to say that the, the box defense this defensive box of Sweden has got to be more aggressive and hold back that big offensive line very much how, what you were alluding to as well Carl yep um, where we've we got G uh, watching from Pennybridge Sweden rooting for my sister number 24 Ellen Persson, so another supporter for Sweden. Hannah Wiles, come on Sweden. Want to see GB back in this. So uh, once again, Hannah wanting the Swedes to win to get the GB Lions back in things. I'm, we were thinking as we discussed that it may well be better for Finland to win this in favour of the GB Lions as Hedstrom manages to field that ball at the 20 and now she picks a little bit of room she's got a seam up the middle and she's at the 40 and before you know it she's close to midfield and there is a flag comes out which more than likely on a kick return like that means it's going to be an illegal block or a hold by the return team we'll see what uh, Peter Parsons has to say but a positive start right from the off for Sweden let's have a listen to referee Parsons the return, holding Sweden number 40 10 yard penalty first down I believe that was number 40 was called for Sweden there. Um, that's Suvodja. Once again, I apologise at the beginning of the first half. I'll continue to do the same at the beginning of the second half for any mispronunciations this afternoon. Yeah, nice start by the Swedes. Shame it was called back there. They would have liked to have um, exploited that field position that they worked so hard for off the kick return. But uh, often happens, doesn't it, that you get a situation where holds uh, come in on these kick returns. So first down and look who's at quarterback on first down. It's uh, Karen Ullen who goes from the Wildcat formation once again, picks up nine yards on first down and the intentions are clear right from the off in the second half. Let's keep Ullen involved in this Swedish attack. Absolute stonkingly good block on Sastamonen, uh, the linebacker number 31 got blocked and just drilled. Nice pancake block to free Ullen. Didn't get a number of who the Swedish girl was, but nice block nevertheless. So second and a very manageable one, which again we mentioned about momentum and the Swedes wanting to try and gain the momentum on offense and that's the way to do it. Pick up big chunk plays on first and second down as in motion comes number five and this time Karen Ullen uses the strength and manages to get rid of the first tackler and that gain of one that she was after seems a little more difficult for her to grab. But it does appear she's going to be close to first down yardage. Yeah, they're using Sarah Lidner uh, for Sweden as a um, kind of blocker that's sealing the edge for Karen Allen to get round. But the Finns are so good at pursuit, it's not just one person you've got to block. So you block, you get one of them blocked, but there's two or three of them will come on pursuit. 
We have got confirmation that SAF that we mentioned earlier on is the Swedish American Football Federation. Um, so great to know that they're tuning into our stream this afternoon once again. Uh, Karen Ullen didn't pick up first down yardage and hurrying to get set because that play clock is running down. It's going to be third and one and there's Let's a sneak there by Johansson and Johansson keeps those legs driving. Depends on the spot but from our vantage point it would appear she has fallen forward with enough room to pick up a first down. So you've got double A gap linebackers coming to the A gaps but the problem with that is that they're stood up and uh, because they're stood up Sweden get the push and that looks like it's going to be a first down. Got to, got to get that centre chopped uh, and down on the ground so you can get at the quarterback. So it is first down Sweden you can see just at the top of your screen there the chains have indeed moved so first down Sweden um, ignore our graphic at the bottom of the screen at the moment. Thir first down with twins to the left a little bit of a false start maybe from Lidner, but it's uh, number 22 who takes the handoff. Zhao comes back on after a little stint in the first half. Give Karen Ullen a bit of a rest and brings a bit of a different dynamic to Zhao. She does, and she brings five yards as well. Nice play on first down. It's so difficult to get um, first downs against this Finnish defence. They're very good, and the Swedes are doing well in this opening series. Because you come out with a game plan that they want to execute get the ball uh, first drive of the first half they're going to want to tie it up here these these first drives are ever so critical for these teams so Johansson once again hands the ball off once again Zhao picks up um, the carry gets back to the line of scrimmage but no further if she's met by four Finnish women who are very quick and aggressive up to the line of scrimmage actually they're going to give a half a yard on that carry so that'll bring up third and four and a half maybe five Mina Lettinen coming in, delivering the boom shot on the running back that time from that tackle position. Very tough up front, and you can see, uh, you'll see when, uh, as we move the camera to the right, those two big tackles coming in now into those big outs. They've played a good game so far today in the middle of the field. So an important third down on this drive, opening drive of the third period for the Swedes. And Johansson hands off once again, and it's Zhao who looks to try and get through a very tall small gap just off left tackle and only picks up a yard and that was going to bring up fourth and four and yeah. the punt unit come out a little bit one-dimensional wasn't it on mm -hmm. second and third down you know first down you get the five yards but then you keep going back to that run game again back to the same sort of plays run up the middle and those two big tackles are playing well and then uh, Ellen Akira coming in for the fins to make the tackle on third down brings up fourth Hopefully you're uh, liking what you're seeing from our broadcast this afternoon and liking what you're hearing from Carl and myself. There's lots more football coming your way from Onside Productions at this time of year as the ball is taken on the run and taken very well. Breaks one tackle, two tackles, and then Lidner, Lidner in fact, comes and subtracts the ball from the carrier and it looks like Sweden have recovered the fumble after that hit by Lidner. What a hit by Lidna just comes in and lights her up. Spinning and dancing away was number 88. That's going to be first down Sweden. And that is an impact play by Lidna. That's Olivuo who was the returner. And initially she took the ball very well. Took it on the run. Spun out of one tackle. Eluded two or three more tackles. And then Lidna came and buried her shoulder pad. Great form tackling the chest. Dislodged the ball. And it's Sweden ball again. Timing was great for Lidner as well because 88 was spinning and Astania Aluvo just trying to get as much yards as she could as you try and then Lidner just was there to deliver the boom as you say Matt. So Johansson and the offence get another opportunity it's Hedstrom in the backfield this time and Johansson rolls to her right then throws back to her left and she hits Karen Ullen and Karen Ullen breaks the tackle she's at the 20, the 15, the 10 touchdown Sweden it's Karen Ullen once again for the Swedes just as she did in the first game against Britain she racks up her second TD of the tournament great play by the Swedes let's go back to the screenplay and get Karen Ullen in space we'll bring the replay up for you in a second but you'll be able to see here how all of the Finnish defensive linemen run after Johansson so here we go watch Johansson go round to her right Ullen then escapes to her left drops back over the top and then one person to beat number 20 and then 92 can't hold on and 84 Ullen uses her speed all the way to the end zone that's what we saw against GB and they've come back to it and it's worked Turn Black is the person who managed or was attempting to make that tackle on Ullen and just like that it is 7 to 6 the extra point no good from the Swedes so the Finns hold a very slender lead with 8.15 left in the third period. 
These Nordic nations are very closely matched and I, I didn't expect it when they came in. I thought the Finns watching these two teams play in the first game, the Finns looked dominant over that Austrian team, but the Swedes have matched and made some adjustments and now, you know, they're even being physical with them. I mean, Lidner coming in and being physical with that big hit, that builds momentum. They're having good battles on that defensive line. Some of the offensive line are playing well to get some run gaps going as well. So this Swedish team cooking with gas, Matt. Big game players step up and make big time plays in big situations. And Karen Ullen just did that for the Swedes today as she did against Great Britain on Monday. What a fantastic start as far as the Swedes are concerned. And again, that's off that turnover, that hit from Lidner as number 11, we've mentioned her name lots, Nurhamo manages to take the ball out to the 40-yard line for Finland where they will take on their next possession. But that's, we talk about turnovers and how critical turnovers can be in games and that's evidence right there. It's not just that you get the ball back, it's, some, it's the emotional intensity of a hit like that by Lidner, which shows, all right, now we can be physical, we can really compete with these tough fins. So everyone steps up their game, and that's uh, led by Lidner. So I mentioned that Onside Productions are going to be bringing you lots more football over the coming weeks, and indeed during August, I think we've got something like 17 games that are being broadcast by Onside Productions over this course of the year. As Kusinin picks the ball up and she's past the 40, she shakes off, just about shakes off one tackler, but that number 24, Ellen Person, manages to grab enough of a jersey and drag her down after a pickup of five. Yeah, Person does a good job there, going one-on-one -on -one against Kusinin, big and strong, and manages to get low enough to bring her down. So yes, this is day two of the Women's European Championship, the IFAF European Women's Championship of 2019. Day three is on Saturday, a game at three o'clock and seven o'clock. And then Carl and I will be back in Tamworth on Sunday for the playoff game between the Tamworth Phoenix and the London Blitz, which promises to be a corker of a game there as Kusinin takes the handoff straight up the middle, north-south running, picks up first down yardage, and the Finns respond well to that Swedish touchdown. Yeah, and this is what they're going to do. Let's go back to our game plan. You know, let's go back to what we do well. What do we do well? We give the ball to Kusin, and, and uh, that's what she's. She was a superstar in the first game, and she she must be close to 50, 60 yards already in this one. So as I've said, hopefully if you're enjoying this coverage, on Saturday we have the remaining two games. Carl and I will be in the booth in Leeds for that one. As we just noticed, Kusin is. Going off, looks like she's suffering from a little bit of cramp off your screen, but we notice she's getting stretched out there as Heiken and Heik uh, hands the ball off once again to the relief runner. Number seven for, and um, that's Mallory, oh sorry, number seven for Sweden is Jaskala. Jaskala picks up positive yardage on that play again. Yeah, Marie Jaskala coming in, doing a good job there. I mean, the, the strength of these things, you put a running back in the back for yes, Kusinen is an immense player, but they've also got this great offensive line, big players, especially on the left-hand side of that offensive line, and they'll continue to uh, churn out the yards. doesn't matter who the running back's in there. Obviously, Kusinen gives them that additional element of size and speed. Artikainen again at quarterback, hands off this time. Once again, it's Jaskala again who picks the ball up. Good pressure from the defensive line this time of the Swedes. Managed to limit it to a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Tom Blatt's helmet's come off there, number 92. She want to just uh, recover that one, but you can, that gives you an idea of the hits that are going in down there on that line of scrimmage. She'll have to take a play out to sort out a helmet. Keep these tweets coming into us here. The uh, hashtag is WEC. Leeds 2019, got plenty coming in all the time. We'll get back to a few more of these. The Helsinki Wolverines are currently watching and obviously they're thinking it's a bit more of a thrilling match this time as far as Finland are concerned. They tweeted that when Finland were winning 7-0 but at 7-6 it's even more exciting. Really very much in the balance this one as Hartikainen drops back, fakes the handoff, throws out to her right, hits number six. And she manages to elude one tackle, spin off and use her strength to pick up a further finish first down. That's Kempi again, Carl. Yeah, Amelia Kempi just getting out to that right-hand edge and then using uh, a nice little move just to beat the first defender. Defender having to rally to make the tackle on that one. But these Finns are driving. They're using much more of their playbook than we've seen so far with these smaller, these shorter passes. So far, it's been Kusin on the ground and then we go deep. But now they're using shorter passes. You can see their formations are changing. They're pulling guards and tackles on trap plays. Uh, really deep playbook these Finns have. So it's first and ten, Finland 
from the Sweden 25 yard line and Kusenin comes back into the attack and she bounces off to the left side and that bullocking run of hers takes her up close to another Finland first down maybe a yard shy great blocking that time by the Finnish offensive line and you can see them pulling now and just wearing down these Swedes Holding. offense number 77 10 yard penalty first down that's uh, Anna Kaiser Sarampe again guilty of the whole I sometimes feel a little bit sorry Carl because nine times out of ten the only time we call names of these offensive linesmen are when they've been pinged for a flag and actually as we mentioned earlier in the game the the strength of this Finnish offensive line has been largely the reason for the success of Kusin. As much as she's a strong runner herself, obviously she can't do it all on her own. And got to give credit to these offensive linemen on both teams. Yeah, Koskinimi, Alanko, Sarampal, they've all been playing their part in this. And you can watch the, 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 the strength of them is their trap play and these pulling guards and tackles from one side of the field to the other. Difficult for these defenders to track when they're churning out the yards when they get it right. So first and 10 becomes first and 17 after the penalty that's where the the hold occurred as Kusenden goes back to work and she's dragged down by number 99 for Sweden that time Veronica Nikias I think on the tackle that time again it's a nice pick up for Kusenden uh, but the Swedes if you watch them now sometimes they're, they're doing a kind of tiger blitz which is putting everyone on the line of scrimmage and they're just trying to fill all of the holes the old tiger cat blitz and uh, these, if you bust that open, the problem with that is if you don't make the tackle at the line of scrimmage, you've got no one behind you. So uh, they have to watch that. That time it was uh, Nikias who was just able to uh, hang off the back of Kusinin and bring it down. Under two minutes remaining in the third period here from Leeds, the John Charles Centre for Sport as Hartikainen drops back in to pass again. Oh, and that ball's come out! There's no flags that look like a, quite a high hit, but that's Lidner again causing her second fumble and second turnover of the game for the Swedes. Wow! <laughs> Lidner's a defensive highlight reel, isn't she? That was fantastic. Busting through the edge, ball comes out, and she got the forced fumble and the recovery. Great job by Lidner. These Swedes, I'll tell you what these Swedes know how to do, Matt. That's to win these close games. So we'll just have to see how, that, how this uh, pans out. But they've certainly got the experience to win the close ones, and they're showing it now in the third. Absolutely. I mean, it did seem to me from that, that uh, camera angle I've just looked back at, a bit of a forearm blow to the head on Hartikainen by Lidner, but nothing illegal from as far as um, referee Parsons is concerned as Johansson hands the ball off, and it looks like Zhao on the carry again. Those quick little feet, very similar back to Ruth Matter for GB. Small, elusive, fast feet. And she picks up four yards before she's replaced by Stromberg. Headstrom, rather. Yeah, so you can see here Zhao on the run. You see the block blocking on that line of scrimmage. They do pull the guard and the tackle. And this close-up play gives you an idea uh, of uh, just what's going on in detail on that line of scrimmage. Good camera work there. But this is where... So they've been strong on first down of the Swedes. Second and third, not so strong. So let's see what they call here. We might go back to that wildcat at some point just to give uh, Ullin another chance. Johansson remains at quarterback to begin with, with uh, Headstrom alongside her, two receivers to her left, and Headstrom does get the ball. This looks like being a reverse, and it is. It's a double reverse, and it, who's it in the hands of? It's Karen Ullin, and that one was a little bit slow developing. Any time you're handing the ball off twice in the backfield that way, in fact, three times from quarterback to running back to receiver to second receiver that's a very risky play and the minute the defense's eyes are in the backfield a double reverse very rarely works yeah the problem with this play is it takes so long to develop and and if it's done at speed maybe you've got a chance but you know the defenders basically are thanking you at this point because yeah. it looks like it's going off if you're a well pursuing defense then you're going to go screaming after the initial sure. runner and then when it changes direction that's what causes Absolutely. the difficulty but if it comes back the other way well you're heading in Absolutely. that direction anyway so second and six now Johansson handing off to Hedstrom and that finished defensive front is strong again and there's a flag coming out and 99% uh, chance that's going to be a hold so they have struggled haven't they these Swedes on second and third down they are trying to do some other things with the reverses and, and what have you we'll see what the call is here holding offense number 50 10 yard penalty third down for any of uh, you guys who are new to our streams Carl and I we have in the past when we've been doing British American football and uh, we've had little uh, flag battles in the past as who can get the right calls and uh, we've not done that today but we've got GB Austria later on and maybe we'll renew our rivalry then to see who can get the the right calls 
I am currently 19 games to zero ahead. <laughs> It's interesting how you get to keep score on the games as well, Matt. I've always noticed how you've kept scores. It's my party, and I'll cry if I want to. Anyway, third and 13 after the hold. And that rather dubious double reverse call, the play before. As Johansson surely will go to the air this time. She's got time, got lots of time. Sidearms in her own fashion. Oh, it's in and out of the hands of Karen yeah, Ullton. Comes flag. The flag. Yeah, that, yeah, and that's right. I mean, we said earlier on, these fins have been close a number of times with these. And that they were just, you know, you can get away with it so far, but that was a definite flag. You can call this one, Carl, just for practice for later. Um, is it... Uh, Illegal procedure, you're quite right. No. Nope. Pass interference, defence number 39, automatic first down at the spot of the foul. So a big momentum swim again for the Swedes. And we are very close to the end of this third period here in Leeds. And the Swedes are marching once again, as you say, from Monday. They know how to win these close games. Never underestimate the power of a good hit. And Lidner mm. turned this game around. That was the turning point. These Swedes are marching, aren't they? So, first down, Johansson. There's that option again, and she pitches the ball out to Hedstrom, and Hedstrom may well get the edge. That's a great form tackle there on the 40-yard line by number 17 for Finland. Yeah, Kivoga, Kivoja coming in there. You'll see here on the pitch out. They've run this a number of times, and this time they do get the connection, but here comes the tackle. Gets her head across the body, which is still a legal hit. Mm -hmm. The shoulder goes in and uh, brings her girl down to the ground. Nice tackle. I'm being very picky here, but for me, that pitch from Johansson, just a fraction early, and I say a fraction early, yeah, we, you've got defenders bearing down on you. It's so easy for us to say in the commentary booth, hold on to that ball just a little bit longer, but it will obviously just release the uh, running back if you can do that as she pitches the ball out and she hits her favourite... Uh, well, it's that player again, offence, defence, he's making an impact, that's Lidner, number five. Yeah, it was a nice play that time by the Swedes, double A get blitz by these Finnish def defenders. Uh, Johansson knows that she doesn't have time, Lidner knows she's got to get into the flat quickly and she does so and picks up uh, five and now it's manageable, third and two and a half. We do have a little bit of time left in this third period. Um, our clock isn't completely in sync with the officials. Okay, so... We've got one or two plays left and third and three upcoming for Johansson and the Swedish ladies to try and convert and keep the pressure on the Finns. There's the play action there and it's Karen Ullen in the backfield and she's tiptoeing her way through and that's going to be very, very close. Very close. And I think from where our official Alicia Darkins is coming in from the top corner, I think they're going to be a yard or two short. They are. That's a yard and a half short. An interesting call here for the Swedes. Clock running. Now, we saw this before. They didn't go for the field goal. We know uh, it's too far for Ullin out here. So they're going to go for it here. And rightly so. You can see how patient Ullin is, actually. She picks up the blocks of the uh, play action. And then she picks up the blocks, dances around a little bit, keeps driving behind number nine. And uh, tries to get as much as she can before going to ground. Fourth down, Matt. This is a critical down. It really is. This could be another big momentum swim. And look who it is. It's Kusinin. Sorry, not Kusinin. Wrong team. But it's... Karen Ullen for her second score of the afternoon, her third score of the tournament. And from 7-0 down at halftime, the Swedes now find themselves in command, 12-7 ahead. Two touchdowns from Ullen in the third and two big hits from Lidner in the third. And those two girls have turned up and they've turned this game around of these Swedes. Wow. They have massive, huge amounts of momentum. You can see here the fake, and then the hole just opens up. You have to say that's just fantastic Great. blocking from the Swedes. Absolutely. And Ullin just... You know, Untouched. Unbelievable play. Well done to the Swedish offensive line. Absolutely. Credit where credit is due, as we mentioned earlier. Sometimes I only comment on these, and they're going for the two points. Going for two extra points with Lidner, and Lidner looks like she's barreled her way through, waiting for the official signal. Nothing, yes, from our near side official. That looks like that is two points for Lidner, and she continues to be an impact on this one. Yeah, it takes a score to 14 to 7, so it means that Finland, if they do manage to put it back, they're going to have to get the PAT to tie the game. But we've got an exciting fourth quarter, and I wouldn't count out these Finns yet. I tell you, they'll be on the sidelines saying, all right, it's time to show our metal. These, these are. These girls are rivals, uh, these two Nordic countries, and they will want to make sure that they put a good showing, these Finns. They're number not going to give it up easy. Absolutely not. Number 90 there for 
uh, Finland, we've just seen limping to the sideline. That's uh, uh, Milena Abbas Mamoda. Um, seems to have a, an issue with that left leg. Hope she's okay and can walk that off. And there she is on your screen now, just behind the coach. But anyway, Sweden kick off once again. And let's see if Finland can bounce back after those two third quarter turnovers. And interestingly, both those turnovers have resulted in Sweden touchdowns. The fumble off the kick return and then the sack strip fumble recovery by Lidner. Nice tackle there. Nurhamo gets the ball for Finland and Moa Toll, who's listed as a running back, comes up, plays for the Arlanda Jets. Came in and made a nice tackle on special teams there. So, as we head towards the fourth quarter, a reminder, get in touch with us if you would like to. We'd love to give you a shout out here on our broadcast. Hashtag WEC Leeds 2019. We've got more to bring you when we get our next opportunity as Hartekainen hands the ball off and it's there going back to Kusnin and Kusnin has a bit of out room outside. Oh, stiff arms, the defender who just manages to get a bit of a tap tackle on her and brings her down after a pickup of two. Ellen Persson just gets enough the shoestring tackle. Watch this one coming in low. I'm just going to grab enough of that ankle and down goes Kusinen. Great camera work once again from Alex. Again, we, uh, we like to have a bit of a joke with him. Um, and that is the end of the third period here in Leeds with a bit of a different feel from half time. The first time the Finns have been behind. Um, 14 to 7 in favour of the Swedes. Yeah, Tom working the cameras there, getting those those uh, great close-up shots, Tom and Alex um, around the Leeds, the John Charles Centre for Sport up in Leeds. So yeah, let's have a quick look while we've got this opportunity car. Let's go back to Twitter. Uh, Maria, the Twitterati, Matt. The Twitterati indeed, Maria Shedding. Go Sweden, beautiful plays, so strong. Uh, we've got Kim Lee watching together with Mother Irene at King Hill Ranch in Sweden. Supporting Sweden and especially my little brother's cousin, uh, Jonna, and her teammates who's playing for the Car from Karlstad Crusaders. Go, 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 Sweden. Um, what else have we got here? Um, Mika Nielsen, Sarah Lidner is the game MVP so far. I think you'd be hard to argue against that one currently with the two uh, turnovers she's created. That extra point as well she converted. Um, so, real good stuff. As we head into the fourth quarter, what can Hartekainen and the Finland ladies muster? As that is number seven, I believe. I just get yeah, number seven for Finland, Jeskela. Once again, picking up positive yardage on second down after uh, Kusinin was tripped on that shoelace tackle at the end of the third period. And another important third down play coming up now. You feel the momentum of the Swedes. If they stop the Finns here and manage to get the ball back and go in once again, well. They did get that short passing attack going towards the end of that set, well, midway in the second quarter, uh, third quarter rather. So we'll see what they dial up here. It might be a uh, run again, I think, Matt. So hard to kind of then with two receivers, one either side. And this time she does go back, drifts it over the middle and attempted one-handed catch there from uh, Rasalati. And the Rasalati there can't grasp that one and it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, it was just too high. It was the right idea. You go play action because you've been running the ball so much and so often you go uh, play action. Uh, interesting that the Finns are going to go for it here in their own half, mm. fourth down. So you've got to be very careful here. Maybe they're just going to try and draw these Swedes offside. Let's see what happens. It would be enough for a first down just, I think, if they did manage to draw them. Let's see how disciplined the Finns can be. But no, they do run a play. And it's no, that's a great play. And there's a first down play. And she's still on her feet. Picks up first down yardage plus eight. And that's Jeskela once again on the carry for the Finns. I like the confidence of the Finns. They're in your own half, fourth down. But what do you got to lose? We're here in Leeds. We come for the championship. We want to win out. Let's go for it on fourth down. And they do. Nice play and good blocking up front. Makes it uh, Marie Jaskula does a, a nice job here. You can see, again, they pull 77 and 60. And 7 just gets a wall of yeah. offensive line. And 60 doing a great job there. That's uh, Nicola. Yeah. Uh, just uh, managing to get the block on and opening up a huge lane for Marie there. Hurrying up a little bit as well, the Finns now. As this time, Hartekainen is going for the air. And she's going for Nymalai. Oh, and that's 
very, very close there for Nurhamo once again. Tries to reel another one in like one-handed. Yeah, look, just like that first play in the first half, didn't it? In that um, uh, second drive, I think it was, of the Finns, where they went deep to Nurhamo. They will come back to that if they have to. They have that weapon out there on the uh, on that um, um, on that fly pass. Yeah, Nurhamo absolutely out there. Number 11, who has proved effective already. Um, Harta Kainanen again, now looking at second and 10 with Kusinin behind her in relief of Jeskala on this drive. And Kusinin does pick up the carry, barrels away through, still on her feet, strong run, drags four Swedish defenders with her, and she's going to be about a yard shy of first down. She's impressive, isn't she, when she gets a turn of speed on that gal. She can't half barrel through these Swedish ladies, and that's going to bring up another that first is. down. Nice, tough running from Kusinen. And I tell you what, there is a possibility at the moment, if Finland go in here, of a tied game. And if that was the, the end of the result, then I think Great Britain might be licking their chops, as it were, at the possibility for them to run out winners, particularly having seen how Sweden have handled Finland. But anyway, a long way to go before that happens as uh, Kusinin again barrels forward, puts her head down, shoulders low, drives those legs, falls forward for a pickup of four on first down. Yeah, can they stop Kusinin? Can the Swedes find a way to stop this inevitable, uh, you know, runs and pounding runs of Kusinin? Look at that offensive line. Mm pushing their way, shoving their way, getting everything they can. They've got time on the clock to keep handing the ball to her. Swedes have got to find a way to get her to the ground in the backfield. Time for Aspenberg to step up on that defensive line of the Swedes. A little bit of a high snap there, and Kusinin does take this. She bounces off one tackle. She's still going, goes around a second to the 15, the 10. She's going to be close, and she's wrestled out of bounds at the three-yard line. Game on, Carl. Kusinen will not be denied, even though it was a muffed handoff. It was actually quite tricky yeah. for the Swedish defence to locate where the ball was. Kusinen comes away with it off to her left, and it took the saving tackle from Ellen Pearson. Here you see it. Just cut number 30, can't get it, and then uses those quick feet, and then out to the edge. So difficult to bring down, and it's a nice tackle in the end by Ellen Person that has to bring her down the defensive back from the Obero Black Knights. Do you know what actually happened there? Because of that delay, that almost acted like a bit of a draw play. You got Lidner who was coming around the far end and she yeah, had to wait right, and Matt. decide what was going what was Harta kind of going to hold on to the ball or was it being handed off? And that delay just sprung Kusin and loose. And here comes um Oh she she's in it's um Yaskala once again number seven as Kusinen does all the legwork and then Yaskala comes on from three yards out and puts the Finns back to within one. What a game this is, Carl. I know. Marie Yaskala here. You'll see it. Nice block from 77. And that frees up Yaskala. So the key block on that one came from the captain, Saram Parr, for these Finns. And that freed up Yaskala to get into the end zone. And they've tied the game. And that drive had a lot of grit and determination and uh, just the uh, champion's drive. Great recovery. And that kick is... My, my, might be good. I think that is good. Tie wow. game. Tie, tie game. game with around eight minutes from remaining in this fourth period. What a comeback from Finland after those two third quarter scores from the Swedes. And they went back to what they're good at, which is giving the ball to Kusinen on the ground. Taiti Kusinen, number 34, their captain, was key on a number of key plays on that one. And in the end, it was Jaskula that was able to bring it in and go in for the end zone. Now, with a tie game like this, it's good. it could go either way. Momentum definitely with the Finns, but those Swedes are also uh, have offensive weapons that they can bring to bear in this fourth quarter. Lidner's been playing great. Uh, you've got Ullin, who's who scored two touchdowns already. So this really is a mouth-watering prospect, these last eight minutes of this fourth quarter. And if these are the top two teams in this tournament, as the standings after day one would suggest, then what a fitting way to decide between them. And that kick is going to go out of bounds. And wow, from scoring there and taking the momentum away from Sweden, they hand it straight back with that kick going out of bounds, which will end up being an illegal procedure penalty. I would have thought, not seen any flags yet, but ordinarily if that kick goes out of bounds without being touched, that ball is starting at the 40. Let's have a little look. It may well be. It went out at about the 40, to be honest, anyway. So it may well be. Here we go. Let's have a listen to referee Parsons. Yeah. 
So yeah, it is an illegal procedure penalty, and instead of being at the 40, they've given it five yards from where it went out of bounds. So Sweden will take over on their own 42-yard line. Bit of a break for the Swedes there, and a, a not the momentum sustaining play that Finland really wanted off that special teams play. But anyway, here we go. Oh, penetration from this finish. Oh, she's oh, unbelievably. She doesn't manage to get, doesn't manage to get back to the line of scrimmage. But a great effort there from Zhao to try and uh, bounce off one tackler, bounce off a second tackler, stay on her feet and try and get back to the line of scrimmage. But that Finnish defensive front made a mockery of the Swedish offensive line at that point. Yeah, you're right, man. We, we saw that earlier in the half, didn't they? We were just closing down, the, uh, earlier in the first half, rather, where they were closing down space, this uh, Finnish defensive line, those big tackles, number 75, number 98. In the end, it was Rakanen that needed to come in, 97, and make the tackle. I mentioned earlier on about whether or not a tie game would be good for Great Britain. Um, as uh, Johansson keeps the ball and she's going, not getting anywhere as well. And you can feel momentum swinging the way of the women in blue at the moment. Two very static plays. And it looks like, I think they might be signaling a turnover even. Are they signaling a turnover? No, the, the Finland team were doing, but it appears that uh, our officiating crew are deeming the runner was down. Johansson was down before the ball came out, so it will be third down and 12. So those two girls you can see on the screen there, 98 and 75, they're the heart of that Finnish defence. That's Mina Lettinen and Laura Pekarinen, and they have been fantastic today. They've caused all sorts of problems for this Swedish offensive line, and again on that play, uh, driving them back, and it was uh, number 75 who actually made the tackle on that one. So, a different quarterback in at the moment now for the Swedes. We've got uh, Mallory Freish, who's coming at quarterback. But there is a flag on this one. Here's referee Parsons. Timeout called by Sweden at 7 minutes 45. First time out of the half. So, that's a, not a flag. It is a timeout for Sweden. As I mentioned, Cole, um, I, we alluded to the fact that the tie game, how would that affect standings? And if we're uh, thinking about... Apologies for talking over our official there. As I mentioned, if this did end in a tie, the likelihood would be, if we're assuming that things will go to form, Sweden would end up with two wins if they were to beat Austria and a tie. GB, if they were to win out, would end up with two wins and a loss. Finland would end up, if they were to tie this one and lose to GB, a win, a loss and a tie. And Austria would end up with no wins and three losses but that's speculating significantly with still the fourth period to go here and um, with three more games as well we are the conjecture is very very frail yeah and thanks to our friends at double coverage you were doing some of this uh, conjecturing with us on on the on the stream today third and 12 and this looks like it's going to be a reverse as the, oh dear me that didn't work at all in wet conditions fresh pass the ball backwards to Johansson who lined up at receiver Johansson then was looking to go downfield and that ball just came out of her hand like a wounded duck what did it get tipped I wasn't sure whether Rackin and number 97 actually got a hand on it as it left I mean he did leave it you're right it was a poor pass and maybe that but the ball was wet uh, but it was also a situation where it looked like it got tipped fourth down anyway so 14 apiece at the moment and it's going to be a punter loopy snap and it was very close to being blocked and as a result that kick bounces and takes a Swedish bounce but inside the 35 and Finland will take over the next possession at the 37 yard line oh, this is going to be a barnstormer of a finish I think Carl well, the Finnish defence just stepped up there. What do you do after you've got the score and you pulled back to, the, to, to tie the game? Well, you make sure your defence goes out and holds firm and doesn't allow the Swedes to get back into it, which is exactly what they did. So good job by that Finnish uh, defence to draw a four, fourth and twelve. And when, you, when that snap comes in like that, the loopy snap, as you call it, you've got to pull your foot back yeah, if it's a short, a short kick. Absolutely. So... Here comes Hartekainen and that Finnish offense who now have the momentum. And when you've got the momentum, what do you do to maintain it? You give it to your workhorse. And that workhorse this afternoon for the Finns is Kusinen, number 34, that north-south runner who is just eating up the yards. Here's a worst defensive back's nightmare. Watch this. So Kusinen comes through the line and number 12, who's her, her Hedvig Pellucci, is on one-on-one -on -one and manages to get her down by the ankles. Good job, Pellucci. I say 
I'd love to see the stats for Kusin in this one already, but I know in game one she picked up 195 yards on 17 carries to go with her four scores as she's got the responsibility again and she skips through and now she turns the power on into the secondary, past midfield, past the 40 and she's dragged down at the 36 of Sweden. Finland are asserting their dominance in this fourth quarter. And and the defensive backs and linebackers are getting tired and of the Swedes and, and Kuchinen is such a load to bring down but she also has tremendously quick feet. She reminds me of, you remember Jerome Bettis? of the Pittsburgh yeah, Steelers, I do. The, bus. the bus, and you would try and tackle him up top, and no. it would be difficult, you couldn't tackle him there, but then you go low and he dance around you, Absolutely. and this is what Kusinen has, Absolutely. she has this interesting mix of both of those flavours, good job, Combination good of power and agility, definitely, she takes a breather, and on comes Yaskalar, and Yaskalar takes the hand off, and she's got a little bit of room over the right side, and she puts her head down, gets up to the 30 yard line, and I think that may well be, well that was first down previously after the Kusinin rush so that will be second second and a two or three I think as Yeskalar then bounces keeps that ball tucked in high to her chest good pick up on first down yeah and blocks going in all over the place not just in the offensive line but these slot backs the receivers obviously if you play in this Finnish offense you are expected to block from whatever position so number one Bengtsson's throwing blocks sorry not Bengtsson that's a rush Rusalati's blowing throwing blocks number three throwing blocks blocks all over the field Yeskalar again with a little plunge up the middle for a first down. Looking ominous now for Sweden as the clock continues to run. 14 apiece. This, you know, people who don't know this game very well and, you know, don't know the intricacies of it and I've got friends who just can't understand why I have such an interest in the game and it's this stop-start and this, that and the other. It's such an all-encompassing you know game tactical game that sways from left to right from one team to another quarter to quarter and you genuinely do never know how a game is going to end everyone has a responsibility on both sides of the ball all 22 players out there have got an impact on every player there's another big impact from Kuslin who wrestles the defender oh she's still on her feet in the 10 the 5 touchdown Kuslin Finland she scores a hat trick and Finland come from 14 7 6 down to take a 20 to 14 lead pure strength Kusin barreling spinning dancing she can do it all this girl absolutely fantastic run this will be on the highlight film for a long time gets a great block from 76 there to free her initially and then Bang. two defenders spins off them throws them away second defender third defender can't get her down fourth defender finally drags her down but not before Kusin's in the end zone what a fantastic run Matt you mentioned Jerome Bettis a while ago I'm thinking Marshawn Lynch beast mode from 30 yards away, breaking tackles, spinning out, and the kick is up, and it's off the upright. So the extra point won't be good. With 4.55 left, Sweden have a slight opening. If they can find the end zone and convert, they could take a 21 to 20 victory. But that's a long way away, and you very much feel the momentum is with the Finnish women at this point in time. Lidner and Ullin will be on the sideline watching that and they will not want that to be the highlight of this game. They're going to want to come on and make some highlights in the last five minutes of this quarter to bring Sweden back into this. Now that loss, that extra point, uh, that might become critical if Sweden can get something going on offence, but they've got to find a way to get these two big tackles on this Finnish defensive line blocked Absolutely. so they can free themselves up and run the plays they want to play. Thank you for all your tweets that are coming in. Remember, you can still got time to get in touch in this one. We're on air again later on for the Great Britain Gal. I love this one from Iron Lion. Iron Lion. One of the co-commentators sounds like Nick Knowles. Great coverage by Onside TV. That can't be me. I'm not southern enough to be Nick Knowles, so that has to be the one and only Carl Walkinshaw. It's a good return up past the 40 to the 43-yard line. We'll see the Swedes take the ball in a, their attempt to come back on this one, Nick. I mean, Carl. <laughs> Thank you. I'll just give Nick a ring and let him know I'm available for whatever he needs. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Going back to the Twitter sphere, Laurie um, says, OMG, just give the trophy to Kusinin, number 34. We've got love for Kusinin coming in from the Helsinki Wolverines. Um, oh, it's fantastic. Great stuff. 
It's uh, nice to see the Finns come. We've seen a lot of Swedish we support, have. but keep those uh, uh, keep that support coming for the Finnish team. And who are we doing? The Wildcats to Karen Ullen, who goes a long way laterally and now turns the corner. And she manages to pick up positive yardage on first down, gets out of bounds. So the clock will stop as she picks up four or five yards on first down. Watch Mina Lettinen, number 75, pursue Ullin all the way from centre of the field. There she is, there. That's from a tackle position to try and force her out of bounds and does enough just to get her out, along with captain Alina Kiro from that linebacker spot. Great work ethic from that interior defensive line of defence. First down has been very effective all day long for the Swedes. Like you mentioned earlier, second and third has been a little bit inspirational, a little bit void of imagination. And this time, Ullin keeps the ball again after the fake to the head. Strumming, Ullin could be gone again at the 30, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Sweden! Wow, it's just back and forth and now the Swedes have the opportunity to go ahead if they can convert this extra point. Woo! Anything you can do, Taita Kusinen, Karen Ullin can do as well. She just drove up that field. Here we go. So she takes the ball here. Good blocking, which they haven't had on second down. And as soon as she saw that, I started pointing towards the end zone because you are not going to catch Karen Ullin in that much space. GB Lions couldn't catch her. The Finns can't catch her. Great work by Karen Ullin. Unbelievable. And now, can Ullin add the extras after she will still be gasping for breath after that long? It's a poor snap. The kick is up, and that is going to be no good. Oh, would Tied you believe it, Matt? game, 20 to 20. Unbelievable here in Leeds in this 2019 IFAF. European Women's Championship. It's a tough ask to, for Karen Ullin. She's just run 50 <laughs> yards and then she's got to come in and you've got to take those deep breaths to get yourself composed for the kick. And she just misses it a little bit off to the left. Oh, tie game. These two teams can't be separated currently. It's going to take a really a special play to win this one by one of these two, uh, by one of these girls on oh. the field. What a game, Matt. We've got another game to do in about two hours' time, Carl. <laughs> save some energy. Oh, goodness me. If it lives up to this one, then we're in for a fantastic day. And like you say, we said earlier, in not ideal conditions in any way, shape or form here in the centre of the United Kingdom on this wet August afternoon, a typical British summer day. So any of you Europeans that are wondering whether to come and experience Britain in the summer, don't. Uh, <laughs> as Finland now, there's an opportunity, there's a little bit of a lane, there's a flag now, so this one, whatever happens, the likelihood is this one's coming back for a hold against the Finns. So instead of being up close to their own 40-yard line, they're going to find themselves back closer to their 30. Let's listen to referee Parsons. Finland, 10-yard penalty, first down. So again, illegal block in the back by the return team, which will march the Finns back a long way to their own 25-yard line. Around four minutes left, 20 to 20. Finland, Sweden, very close geographically, very close on the scoreboard. Who can break this deadlock? It now comes down to the last couple of minutes here in Leeds. Hartekainen hands the ball off and it's Kusinen who must have thought earlier on she'd got a score that they would be able to defend but now it's the Swedish defensive line that stops and comes up strong on first down. Yeah, I think it was number 21 there that's coming to make the tackle. These defensive backs having to get involved. Sabina Rydberg coming in there to make the tackle on Kusinen. Uh, for, you know, three-minute offense, well, you're getting down to two minutes now, aren't you, for these Finns? they got two minutes to try and get these uh, these Finns into the end zone and get the win. Hartekainen back there once again. Kusinen more than likely won't be leaving the field anytime soon. She'll just be barnstorming up the middle again. And she's past the 50-yard line to the 49 until she's brought down. This, th these defences now, both Russian defences, are really struggling. 
Yeah, because they've worn out. They've just been chasing these ladies down all game. And Kusinen, even though she's been getting treatment on the sideline, remember, Kusinen, who ran for however many yards, over 100 yards last time. 197. 197. 197 last time. She's had a day to recover, Matt. A day. <laughs> and she's coming out and blasting her way through these Swedes. She can't, Unbelievable. Be, can't be far off the 200-yard mark once again in this one today. She gets a bit of a breather. And that's great penetration by the linebacker for the Swedes, number 55. Yeah, we mentioned it before, Ellen Thimfers is coming in. She's made an impact, a number of plays, and on that one she does as well. Maybe that's enough for these Swedes just to stop that momentum. That's a huge play by Thimfers on first down. We're around two minutes out, give or take. We're uh, guessing a little bit with our, with our clock. So here come the Finns anyway. We'll see what they can do second and 14. They don't like these situations because they have to, they, they obviously rely heavily on that running attack. This time they are going to go to the air over the middle. Oh, this is tipped. Intercepted! And intercepted by the Swedes and they're making their way down the left sideline. And that's what you get when you get a play like Thimfers that puts you in a position where you have to pass the ball, Matt. Oh my word. This fourth quarter's had everything. That's Amanda Usland with the pick. You can see ball's tipped and defenders converging on the ball and Aslan does enough and she does a good job of protecting the ball as she gets towards the sideline. She, she's holding on to it and making sure that she doesn't lose sight of it. I think it was backup quarterback Mallory Freish who tipped the ball there, number seven, and unbelievable turn of events. That is a two-minute warning at one minute 59 seconds. One minute 59. So, as we've heard from referee Parsons, one fifty-nine. The Swedes suddenly in the ascendancy. Goodness me. It's going to come... I mean, it comes down to that turnover. One of these offences... One of these defences needed to step up as everyone's getting tired on defence. And the Swedish defence stepped up. Back to the wildcat for the Swedes. Two fumble recoveries and an interception. Ullen drops the football. As she was once again reading whether to hand the ball to Hedstrom or not. And in that attempt to pull the ball out, she drops the ball. Oh my goodness, it's drama after drama. They've done pretty well of both teams actually handing the ball in difficult, tough conditions because it is wet out there, it is cold out there. And they've done well up to this point, but that's a bad time to have a snap like that. It's pushed them back into their own half and they were in the finish half. Clock continues to roll, a minute and change left in the fourth quarter. Game three of the IFAF European Women's Championship 2019. And here's Ullen again and Ullen is snagged in the backfield. Number 75 for the Finns. Another fantastic effort penetrating through is Lettinen. We've mentioned her so many times. Mina Lettinen, you are a monster tackle. And she's been, she's work, her work ethic is unbelievable. I've seen her making tackles on the sideline. That time she busts through to take them down. Now, we will remind our viewers there is no overtime in this competition. So if this ends up 2020, then we're in a situation where, you know, we will have a tie. There will be no overtime. And GB will have to deal with the consequences of a tie. Just a reminder as well, our clock on screen there is, a, is a, more of a guide rather than the official clock. There's no official clock in the stadium. And unfortunately, we can't have access to the officials' timekeeping devices. So it's more of a guide as Johansson looks to pass. And now she's in trouble. And she flips the ball out. Um, there was... Let's see whether there's a flag yeah. for intentional grounding here. The referee's asking the question, but nothing's come in yet. Because that was it was 50 eligible, it was well, very unlikely. Alexandra Thornstrand is number 50. And there is a flag there, I think. And I don't think she is an, el an, el an eligible receiver. And the nerves are now getting to all these players here at 2020 with under a minute remaining in the fourth period. Just trying to sort this one out is our officiating crew. One or more opportunity to get in touch with us here at W at www hashtag WEC leads 2019 it doesn't appear that there is going to be a flag for intentional grounding so it's going to be fourth down and Sweden are about to punt this one away they've got no choice Matt nope. they've, they've pushed so far back the Finnish defence were tenacious on that series bad snap and this one could be disaster for Sweden again well, Karen Ullen has no opportunity then to pick the ball up and try and make the best out of it she can. And all of a sudden, after that interception where you felt momentum was going Sweden's way, Finland, four fantastic defensive efforts. 
And who's there again? Just getting up Mina Lettinen, Lettinen with again. the tackle on Allen. What an unbelievable defensive effort she's put in in this fourth quarter. And who right now is licking their lips 36 yards away from pay dirt. You know Kuslin is coming on to carry the Finns, hopefully for them, all the way to the victory and their second win of this tournament. Get in touch with us if you can. Hashtag WEC Leeds 2019 with under a minute to go. And here's Kuslin from fullback this time but she's snagged initially but you know how strong she is and the Swedes do well to hang on number 46 for Sweden that time number 46 manages to make sure that Kusnin cannot Toby continue Hedegaard. that run here we go listening to our official by Finland at 19 seconds their first time out of the half finish time out so they can assess what to do and our clock has run to zero but that is not the case as I mentioned it's a guide rather than the official timing there is no official clock in the stadium we have not been permitted access to the officials timekeeping devices so as such we are just trying to give you a guide rather than it being any official timing mechanism on our screen but Carl this one's had everything it has and it might not have an ending yet it might have an ending just yet you've got to locate Kirsty Nurhamo if you are the Swedish defenders that is the girl that you want to locate a couple of times they went to a deep if she can and has the ability to get past and behind this Swedish defense so we'll see whether Finland will try and dial that up maybe with some trickery in the backfield what do you do pitch to pitch to Kirsten and pitch back to the quarterback go for Nurhamo what about that got nothing to lose Matt you're going for a flea flicker in flea Leeds. Flea flicker deep to Nurhamo. Why not? Went Let's to, see what they've got. Have you recently picked up the latest Madden 20? All the video games are available. She's top of your screen, she is up there. 11. Keep your eye on her. Stranger things have happened. Hard to kind and look in her way to begin with. The DB is looking off. She's looking this time to her right-hand side. Going up top. And that's going to be a flag all day long, I would have thought. There it comes. Number 20 for Sweden. Didn't get her head around. The receiver was trying to go back towards the ball and that's going to be spot file pass interference and it's going to be first down Finland inside the Sweden 20. So Kempi goes to Sapala. <coughs> can't catch the ball but that's because the defender was all over her. And yeah, you're right Matt, this is going to take them right to the edge of the goal line, isn't it? I tell you, obviously, obviously we're both British and uh, I know on Monday there were some comments that we were a little impartial with our commentary. Defence number 20, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So there it is, automatic so first down for pass interference. I say, I know we were, we were deemed a little impartial maybe when the Brits were well, playing. we were a little partial, in fact. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we were, I think. Uh, uh, yes, uh, apologies. But today, I mean, this has just been a fantastic game. For the neutral, as you and I are here, to be able to commentate on this one and see the, the effort, but also, not only the effort, but the invention from both teams, the the pure tenacity, the desire not to be beaten. Kusinin and Ullen very much the standout players on both sides of the ball once again. And I will be surprised when we see the MVPs award at the end if those two aren't the girls that are the recipients of those awards. But still a few seconds left. Hartekainen again fakes, drops over the top and she's got a receiver at the three. Touchdown Finland! And that could be game over. That's Rasalati for Finland with the go-ahead score. They haven't gone to her the whole game. We didn't see them go to her against Austria. It's out of the back of the play, play action, and she's wide oh. open. Great block, by the way, in the backfield by Kusinen. And number one, Anne Rasalati makes the score in what must be the last play of the game, it Matt, surely. Can't be far away at all. Unbelievable scenes. Let's see if just for the insurance measure the conversion is up and it is good 27 finland 20 sweden in this thriller here in leeds in game three of the ifaf 2019 women's european championship and finland are on their way to a 2-0 record and one hand on this trophy and how costly was that pass interference penalty in the end where they tried to go to sapala and uh, the defender unfortunately drew the flag 
Oh. So we've got to have something. I mean, there isn't much time left for Sweden. We think the clock's close to zero. If not, uh, you know, there's going to be the, the kickoff, maybe one play sure. that the Swedes will have to make something happen. But then even if they Sweden do manage to score, they've still got that uh, extra point, which they've struggled with. You know, so even with a touchdown a, a, and an unbelievably fairy tale touchdown in the dying seconds of this one, Sweden will still have to convert. You would have thought that this ball will more than likely be squibbed. I don't think they're going to give um, those returners for... Well, Ullin will be back there, you yeah. can be sure. Maybe Lidner as well. Well, but Ullin, Ullin and Hedstrom are the people who are on our roster on our depth chart as the returners we'll see whether or not they are back there or whether they're further up in the up back position i think that might be a delay of game penalty yeah i mean it's not uh, it's not a huge issue for the Finns. they can kick i mean given that you've got a couple of plays to run here including the kickoff if they squib kick it up the middle make it awkward for these swedes you're not looking for huge amounts of distance on the kick you're just looking to uh, prevent these swedes from doing any trickery that they might want to do on this kick return so, not a hugely costly penalty, but nevertheless, gives the Swedes a little bit of hope. All right, they've waved it off. So, we start again on this kick, kick off, and we'll see what the Finns do here, whether it is a squib kick or whether they are going to kick it deep. Once again, our clock shows zero, but that isn't necessarily the case. So it's ignore the longest two minutes for I've ever spent. <laughs> ignore our clock. It is only a guide due to the fact that there is no stadium clock and we don't have access to the officials' timing. So... We are kind of guessing it's a high kick. And that one is going to be, is it going to be fielded? It is fielded. And the ball is given to Ullen. And Ullen is still on her feet down the sideline. She's tackled. There's no celebration from the Finns yet. So whether or not we're going to have a couple of opportunities for the Swedes to do something here. The offense is coming out onto the field. Yeah, Hedstrom might have been better just keeping that kick return herself. I know that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to do the reserve, uh, reverse and get it into Ullin's hands. Understandable. But uh, the way that ball was kicked, Hedstrom might have been better just going off to her left and seeing what she could get. Now, I don't think, what are we talking about? Like two plays maybe? Well, yeah, maybe. But, I mean, the benefit for the Swedes is the fact that they've gone long. You know, Head, uh, Ullen has scored long touchdowns already today and on Monday. So, there is the capability. She's in the slot position there. Look, we know on Monday, just listen to referee Parsons. I think it's going to be a timeout by uh, one of the teams. Timeout called by Finland with four seconds remaining. That is their second timeout of the half. So we think, barring a penalty, this will be the last play of the game. Four seconds remaining, as you can see on our screen now. Finland called that time out there just to make sure they could be as secure as possible. We saw Karen. Well, you can't see any of them actually at the line of scrimmage. So <laughs> they're either huddling up or they're all they're all defending the <laughs> ten yard line. <laughs> oh dear! Very deep coverage. Maybe not the case. Um, we saw Karen Ullen against Great Britain take a quick out pattern and turn it into an 84-yard touchdown in the first quarter on Monday. They do really need a miracle here now. You can only three linemen coming up for the Finns, as you would expect. A couple of linebackers out there. And now then, what can... The Swedes muster on this final play of the game. Another nail-biter. They were on the right side of it against Britain. And that time it's to Ullen. And Ullen makes the catch. We think that will be time. It seems to have taken more than four seconds for her to catch the ball and get down to the ground. Unless they call timeout in time. The referee, Peter Parsons, comes to the centre. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the ball game with a thriller of an encounter this afternoon which sees Finland run out 27 to 20 winners here over Sweden and give them a 2-0 record and one hand on the trophy this time out Carl that's one of the best games of football I've seen in a very very long time a couple of great teams both Nordic countries obviously rivals geographically but also neighbours it gives so many different stories and so many layers to this win in terms of it being the European Championship in terms of what uh, you know Ullin was able to do and in terms of what uh, number 34 Kusinen was able to do and just the whole back and forth of the game especially in that third and fourth quarter just a fantastic spectacle and congratulations to Finland on a hard fought win Unbelievable. You thought Finland were going to take this early on when they scored right from the outset. 
Then Sweden came back and took a 14 to 6 lead. And before you know it, then Finland were ahead 20 to 14. Sweden then came back and leveled it up at 20 apiece. And then Finland with that score to Anne Rasalati in the last couple of minutes took the score out to 27 to 20 as we now will hear about the game MVPs. As expected, Karen Ullin there, the MVP for Sweden. And we would assume there is really only one candidate for Finland. Let's have a listen to see if Kusinen is the recipient. And the MVP for Finland. Wearing number 34 for Finland today, the MVP is Tutti Kusinen. Well deserved by both those girls. Tainted MVP really for Karen Ullen. She will now know how Ruth Matter felt on Monday when Ruth received the MVP but was on the losing side. And unfortunately for Karen Ullen and the Swedes, they are on the losing end today. But what a hard fought game. From a British standpoint, it will give them some hope in the fact that Sweden ran Finland so close and ready for their encounter on Saturday with the Finns. Yeah, you wouldn't want to write out GB against the Finnish, would you? You'd, you'd say the, the GB, our girls are going to give them a fight, give them a battle for that and that last game of the tournament. I hope you get a win against Austria that it means something. We hope that uh, obviously later on that comes to fruition. Just see how emotional Kusunen was at the win. Number sure. 34 coming to get pick up her MVP trophy and she's kind of you know push, pushing back the tears to smile for the cameras you can see what the win means I mean this means everything to these girls they've worked really really hard they've come all the way to Great Britain they've had to do it in the rain in the, in the Great British summer and uh, <laughs> they've pulled out the win against a very tough Swedish team congratulations Finland absolutely so Finland now have the luxury of taking a couple of days away from the field they'll be able to watch that Great Britain Austria game this evening which we will be broadcasting live on onside production from 7 p.m. Um, and again I do feel like we kind of ignored the Austrians a little bit there if the Brits look too far ahead and look toward that Finland game before they take care of business this evening Austria are very very dangerous and could easily make that game irrelevant for Britain on Saturday night so join us at seven o'clock this evening for that one which promises to be another close encounter between the Great Britain Lions and the Austrian ladies American football outfit but Finland have two wins on the board they are now undefeated Sweden one win one loss and they will look to avenge this defeat on Saturday when they take on Austria good stuff so far so Carl we will take a breather from this one and get our breath back after what has been a monumental victory for the Finns thank you as ever thank you to our production crew Steve Joe Steve, Alex rather and Tom um, we look forward to joining you once again this evening from 7 o'clock when we will watch the Great Britain Lions take on the Austrian ladies team but we will leave you here with our final score Finland 27 and Sweden 20 we will see you later on tonight